Welcome to your sanity safe space with your favorite YouTube podcast duo. Skag three, whoever he is. Get your blood fascist ass out of here! Saving the millennial generation in weekly installments. You are a terrific team on all counts. Live from a castle tower and his mother's basement, this, this is the Matt and Blonde Show. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true and international over to person. <laughs> Hey, why the fuck is the gas so hot, bitch? Vice President Kamala Harris decided to go to Florida specifically to challenge its new standards for black history education passed just days ago. This is unnecessary to debate whether enslaved people benefited from slavery. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Extremists have dared to ban books. Extremists pass a law, don't say gay. Gay! They want to replace history with lies. To push propaganda to our children. Any math teachers in the room? I love Venn diagrams. From where are we seeing the attacks? A lot of them revert to the same source. They insult us in an attempt to gaslight us. And we will not have it. Let us not let these politicians divide our country. We have the ability to unite. I doubt it. You are fake news. The American people are tired of women. Very fake news. You sound like a hysterical, bleeping, snowflake, lesbo bleep. It's not against the law, whole fuck you. Well, it's not my concern. Congratulations, buddy. All right, America, go to the YouTube right now. Big ups to Rebecca for keeping Matt woke. Congratulations to both of you. You're awesome. I, I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live! Fuck it! <laughs> fuck it, we'll do it live! Hello and welcome to the show. It is a great show. It is a terrific show. It is a tremendous show. Frankly, the very best. You can ask anyone about that. People often do. I'm told this is the Matt and Blonde Show. My name is Matt Christensen. I'm flanked on my right, as always, by my wonderful co-host, Blonde. Welcome. Hello. Rounds three and four are already here before rounds one and two have really even started yet. Late in the week, reports surface that Trump is soon to be charged in both the January 6th case and the Georgia election interference case, as well as the Stormy Daniels case and the classified documents case in which he's already charged. At this point, I'm already bored. Come this up with- This time though, this time. This is one of these four. It's going to be the one, maybe. But uh, I don't know. You got to come up with something new. I'm already bored of the uh, ex-president prosecutions and they haven't even hit trial yet. <laughs> it, it might be this, this campaign season. You're going to have Joe Biden locked in a basement. If it is indeed Joe Biden, you're going to have Donald Trump locked in jail. It is going to be Zoom warfare that can only be decided by ballot harvesting. May the best harvester win. Unfortunately, I think we know who the best harvester is in this particular contest, but uh, can't wait to see it. Seriously, you're excited for this? Well, as excited as I could be for the continued and perpetual decline of my country. <laughs> but at least it, at least there's excitement for something. That's uh, true. We'll discuss those developments. Plus, the second IRS Hunter Biden whistleblower reveals himself in a congressional hearing. Democrats praise censorship because this is the good kind of censorship when you're telling RFK that he's a disgrace to his own last name. He has the wrong opinion. So the Kennedy name, which, of course, has never been tarnished by anybody other than RFK Jr. No. Yeah, really. It has been reclaimed by the party, just absorbed into the party. It's not RFK Jr. I don't Jr. remember anybody anymore. drowning in any kind of car. And I don't no. remember any president having disseminated gonorrhea. I just they <laughs> didn't do nothing. The Kennedys. There was a a shooting in Fargo where a guy killed a cop and wounded two more in addition to a civilian, too. Oh, yeah. Doesn't count because he's a Syrian refugee. Actually, he is a naturalized citizen at this point, but came here as an asylum seeker from Syria back a decade ago. Uh, Also, though, the gun part that he used in his particular rifle configuration may be another one of those that the uh, politicians might try to seize on. Uh. This story isn't political necessarily, 
and, and so I don't know that it directly compares to Jesse Smollett, but Carly Russell and this kidnapping hoax, that's got to be one of the best since Jesse. And because it isn't political and there's no obvious racial component, there's no go fund me. There's no clear aim as far as we can tell. This is a mystery. What was she trying to achieve? I don't know. Is that I, female attention seeking. Is it? Is that it? It just was like to try to get. Well, you literally put a section in the notes that said, uh, why did she do this? And I didn't even fill it out. I just put speculate wildly because <laughs> I have no fucking clue. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. It's the only thing that makes sense, I guess, is I want to be. What was that? What was it like Elizabeth Smart who was um, recovered from a long term kidnapping or who was that famous woman? Oh, for a second, I was like the Theranos chick. <laughs> no, oh, that's uh, Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Elizabeth Smart. Uh, hadn't she? She was gone for like nine months, though. Yeah, this was uh, a little shorter, but is that what she was trying to? Oh, I disappeared in the the orange man who made me take uh, OnlyFans picks. Uh, let me go and I escaped. Was that it? She just wanted like a spot on daytime TV or something like that. I don't know. Maybe pics of her butthole were about to get leaked organically. Ah, get out ahead of it. Trying to get ahead of it. <laughs> Saw what happened to Leslie Jones, not to Carly <laughs> Russell. That can't happen. Hmm. Plus, before we get out of here, we have uh, hoax hate, and tonight's movie review is Beetlejuice. So stick around for that. We'll catch up with your super chats in between topics. 10 bucks and up on the Sunday show because we are no good low down money grabbers. Of course, it will be all this and more in your favorite couple hours of listening material. Remember, you can find everything show related and support the show for as little as a buck a month over on the website. That is Matt Christensen media dot com. Listener support is hugely appreciated and it is what keeps the show operational. So if you enjoy the show, please consider supporting the show. We also have show merchandise for sale over on the site. Plus, we have offers from friendly listener-owned businesses as well. This week's feature business is our friends at Kineo Mountain Woodsmithing. These are high-quality, handmade, premium hardwood cutting boards, charcuterie boards, serving trays, and more, all constructed with the materials and craftsmanship to last a lifetime. And the best part about Kineo Mountain's work is it's all customizable, not just in the selection of the materials, and the shades and the colors, but in custom engraving too. Blake at Kineo Mountain made me a cutting board engraved with my own channel logo, and it looks incredible. It's a -a one-of-a-kind personalized addition to our kitchen that we use nearly every day, and it hasn't aged a bit. And don't forget, Kineo Mountain can handle any sort of woodworking, from small table trays to big furniture projects. So if you're looking for a personalized gift for someone special, or bigger, bigger items to customize your home, Make it fine hardwood craftsmanship from Kineo Mountain Woodsmithing, the absolute highest quality woodworking that will last you forever. Check them out at kineowood.com. That's K-I-N-E-O wood.com. And of course, listeners of this show get 10% off all Kineo Mountain Woodsmithing products and services using promo code MATT10 at checkout. That's promo code MATT10 for 10% off everything from Kineo Mountain Woodsmithing. You can find everything you need from our friends at Kineo Mountain Woodsmithing, plus other great offers from the rest of our friendly listener-owned businesses like Hero Soap Company, Western Razor Company, Sonoran Defense Technologies, and more. That's at mattchristensenmedia.com slash deals. Deals by listeners for listeners. And don't forget, all three of our signature soaps from Hero Soap are available as well. That's true. I've actually never seen these Kineo wood cutting boards before. These are sweet. I can uh, I can vouch for them personally. It's uh it's Wait, a which one did product. you get? You can see it in the slideshow. I actually have the well, the one that's engraved with my channel logo. Oh, okay. Do you but, know what kind um, of wood it is? But, uh I forget exactly what wood he used. Damn on, you, Matt. Okay. Didn't one. mean to put you on the spot. But Go you ahead. get a choice. You get a choice. And uh speaking of choices, you could try <laughs> our signature soaps. Timberline, Old West, or Blonde Soap, Oat Plus Almond from Hero Soap Company, HeroSoapCompany.com. Promo code MC Listener for 10% off. Likewise, find everything you need from Hero Soap Company at MattChristiansonMedia.com slash deals. Quick announcement before we hop into the news. Uh, Bible Study Season 2 is officially announced. Nice. Coming back September 15th. And for those of you who participated in Bible Study Season 1 in which we studied John's gospel, you may recall we had planned to come back 
hoping for June or July. Obviously, we did not hit that target. Uh, but Robert, the study leader, and I have both had absolutely insane uh, personal lives since since the last study ended in the spring. So the next session of the study will start uh, again September fifteenth. Content wise, we're going to do a brief introduction through Genesis, and then a bulk of the study will be on Acts. And I know that's a long way away, a couple months away still, or at least six weeks. Uh, so I will make an announcement again when we're closer to that date. But in the meantime, if you'd like to receive emails about Bible study, there is an email list sign up on the Bible study page of the website, mattchristiansandmedia.com slash Bible study, also linked on the homepage as well. And it'll be just like last time. Anyone can participate. Uh, and then if you can't participate live, we are going to move to Friday night this time. If you can't participate live, uh, it's available as a, a podcast on demand as well. If you'd like to follow along in your own private time. But uh, moving into the news. Uh, well, shockingly. Let me get that. There's my cutting board. Sorry. Improperly timed. Great cutting board, but that's not what I was looking for. I'm looking for the news here. Don't put up a picture of this bitch's face. Why won't it come I will up? Vomit. There we go. Okay. Uh, shockingly, I know it's it's Megan, Megan Rapinoe's farewell tour, as we discussed. Uh, that apparently is not selling tickets to see the Women's World Cup in New Zealand, which is now underway. And I'm sure that's the first of you hearing that it's actually underway. Uh, yeah, first, who sees this? How many people can they even get into a stadium? I don't know for the women. For the men, the old record is like sixty-five thousand people per game. Well, yeah, because people like to watch men's sports. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the women are definitely not pulling that, so I don't know what they're averaging or what the max is. But <laughs> they've tried a few methods to sell these tickets. First, they tried moral obligation. So <laughs> <laughs> the FIFA president Gianni Infantino pleaded with New Zealanders to, quote, do the right thing. He said early in the week, um, quote, <laughs> uh, New Zealand, we want you. We need you. It's never too late to do the right thing. Come watch the matches. We need full stadiums to warm us all up. That apparently did not work. So then they tried <laughs> giving away the tickets for free. Zero with an X is uh, a corporate sponsor of the tournament. They gave away 20,000 tickets with the hope of filling stadiums. Apparently free might not be a good enough offer either. Uh, so it's going to get really awkward when they start offering to pay people to go and people still say no. And then next, yeah. of course, comes the right thing by force. They're going to arrest you and sentence you to watch a professional women's soccer game. Uh, and even that, I suspect, would be avoided by an Epstein-style jailhouse suicide for a lot of people. <laughs> they would not participate. Uh, but they'll do anything to avoid acknowledging the reality that nobody cares about women's sports or even women's soccer, the most uh, the most popular international soccer in general being the most popular international sport, of course. Um, and, and so they're going to offer all sorts of explanations otherwise as to why they're having so many so much trouble selling these tickets. Here is a, a BBC report uh, trying to explain the lack of attendance with any other variable. It's here at Eden Park that the World Cup will kick off this Thursday when New Zealand's football firms take on Norway. But this is just one of four stadiums across the country where games are being held. But despite how big this event is and the fact that, for example, Eden Park has invested about 21 million US dollars upgrading its facilities ahead of the Cup, ticket sales have been lacklustre. The organisers, FIFA, have had to give out about 20,000 tickets just to try and fill the stadiums. And very few of the games are sold out. Those that are all involve New Zealand. So what's behind this lack of demand? The reality is that um, it's been challenging across um, all events in Aotearoa. There is a cost of living crisis in New Zealand and that correlates to then buyer habits and, and decisions being made. So one of the troubles when it comes to ticket sales is just how far New Zealand is for European and North American fans to travel. And despite all of these troubles when it comes to filling the stadiums, this World Cup is expected to be the largest attended women's sporting event of all time. Okay, what? <laughs> it's the last. So is there. no one coming, or is everyone coming? Yeah, well, there's chick math afoot here. This 
We can't get people into the stadium. Also, it's the record for the most attended event as far as women's sports are concerned of all time. I tried to read a little bit about how this could possibly be, and then I remembered I was reading about women's soccer, so I stopped. But there are some explanations for how that supposedly makes sense, that we we can't get enough people to attend. Also, it's the most attended. They are saying in this Forbes explanation, you scroll down, it says, well, it, it's on track to have over 1.25 million people in attendance total across all the games. I thought, okay, well, what's the, how does that compare to the men's game? I know the men's World Cup attendance is going to be much larger. Well, the all-time high was the 1994 Men's World Cup in the United States. That was L.A. back in uh, 94. And that was just over three and a half million total attendance. And There's so, no way it's that close. There's no way a, a million and a half people or whatever you just said are going to show up to this. It was also the men's benchmark was set 30 years ago, too. Yeah. So 30 years ago, they're getting numbers, numbers three times as high as what the women are allegedly getting today. And of course, you look at these numbers and say, OK, you're getting even with your chick math numbers, you're getting a third of the attendance of the men's World Cup. Somehow you still want equal pay. Explain. Uh, I'll wait on mm-hmm. Megan Rapino for that one. Yeah. Why is nobody talking about the real reason? Like, I think that the real reason that nobody wants to watch women's sports is less offensive than the contrived reason. And it's that men can push their bodies more. And so the sports are more interesting. Yeah, of isn't, course. Isn't that, that should just be easy for women to accept. Like, I don't, I, what's the deal here? Well, the other reality is women on average generally don't like watching sports as much either. So you have Mm-mm. superior performance on the part of the men. That's just a biological reality. And then the theoretical fan base for women's sports, which would be women. They don't like watching sports most often, not all, but most often. Yeah. I mean, there are some women's sports that I have no interest in seeing men do uh, I, I i religiously watch female gymnastics only during the olympics and figure skating i have no interest in watching male gymnastics or figure skating it's just it's just too gay um so it's not you know it's, it's not ridiculous to think that women would watch any sports but but soccer they're all so bush oh, <laughs> taking a ball well i don't know i don't think they're quite as butch as the wnba but that's Ooh, not saying of course much. not um Of course, as discussed last week, the Secret Service ended the investigation into the White House cocaine scandal without identifying a suspect. Dan Bongino, of course, a former Secret Service agent, uh, is well connected to agents and other sources within the service uh, within the service to this day. So he had some thoughts this week. He says not only do they know exactly who did it, not just theoretically, but he says he has sources telling him that. But he says an inside source tells him that the cocaine drop, uh, cocaine drop, excuse me, may have been intentional, as in dropped in this particular place to be picked up by another person. And it was then intercepted. Let's just say a friend called me up and said, don't preclude the possibility that the cocaine found in the White House there was not accidentally left behind. In other words, it was left there deliberately for someone to find and let's just say someone else may have found it. So that's a story I kind of yeah. heard from someone yeah. who may know a little something so, about so, something. We'll see what happens, but so, they know yeah, who it is. I'm it, it's very. OK, who uh, who's dropping for whom is not publicly known, of course. And, and I'm not saying that Dan Bongino is wrong, uh, but I, I'm not counting out another explanation either. Have we looked at members of Congress and their staff? There's one particular suspect. I want to draw your attention to because there was this uh, House weaponization of the federal government hearing with RFK Jr. that uh, I mentioned earlier and that we'll get to uh, in a little bit more detail later. But during this uh, hearing, Stacey Plaskett, who's the non-voting delegate from the Virgin Islands, she was giving a statement. (laughs) Now watch her, I guess her staffer behind her. You tell me there are no drugs involved with this lady's behavior. I wanted to introduce him to the record, page 50, 55 from the committee's interview with FBI employee Roya Demlo, who you just spoke about, which took place on July 17, 2023. Determined in October 2020 that the laptop belonged to Hunter Biden, that the contents belonged. They would be representing what I said because I don't have much knowledge of that. They would be misrepresenting what I said, because I don't have much knowledge of that. 
uh, because this committee likes to misrepresent. Yeah, when you put a type A person on cocaine, that's what you've got. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, so in this case, you disputed my Kamala suspicion. In this case, you say diagnosis cocaine. Oh, yeah, so that's okay. chicks on something for sure. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why anybody would use cocaine in a work setting when they could just use Adderall. Well, there was there was a lot of speculation for that, too. Maybe that's what we're watching. But reactions on Twitter explaining this, they say that that staffer, she clearly wrote the statement and she's saying it back to herself while monitoring Plaskett's words, which it does appear that she's mouthing the speech along with the uh, congresswoman. Yeah, but she's also on cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. They're not mutually exclusive. You're right. It's just explaining her behavior. That is what it looks like. But that does raise some more questions, too. First of all, who memorizes an entire speech in this way? And then rehearses it and then does drugs to facilitate if that's what we're watching. But even if it's not, why do you need to do that in the first place? And if that is what's happening, do we this is, of course, a rhetorical question. We all know the answer to this. But do we actually have members of Congress or we do we just have fronts who are puppeted by other people behind the scenes? And if if is is being yes. a member of Congress or a delegate, whatever her title is in this case, is that job just reading other weirdos words? If if this weirdo lady is the puppet master, what does that say for the state of our country? Whatever the explanation is, it makes me understand exactly what the woman on the airplane was saying. That motherfucker is not real. You look at a woman like this, that that lady's not real. And uh, there was, uh, yeah, that that's the other explanation. It's not drugs. It's that this was a lizard person mouthing the words it wrote for the human doing the human talking. I, That's correct. I think the explanation that we just watched a lizard person who controls the congresswoman is just as reasonable as this is a speechwriter on Adderall. Okay, yeah. I, I think it's just a speechwriter on Adderall. All right. Fine. I mean, people should assume that like a lot of people in Congress are on drugs. Uh, a fair assumption, I suppose. Everybody's like, oh, well, somebody had cocaine in the White House. I was thinking like, who doesn't have cocaine in the White House? <laughs> Well, there were a couple episodes of, um, if not tech censorship this week, at least removal of content and a dispute about whether it was viewpoint based or not. I say that with respect to Rumble taking down a Nick Fuentes video. And as far as I can tell, this is the first example of Rumble taking down political content that I'm aware of. I had not heard of a, a political commentator being censored by Rumble in this way. Now, Rumble has their explanation, which we'll get to in a minute, but Part of the issue was this disappeared without explanation and everyone was left to speculate about what happened. So Nick Fuentes has this this rally last Sunday that's on Rumble, which my understanding, at least this particular portion of it, was a reading of the Talmud, uh, substituting Jews for non-Jews to make a point about how words said one way are fine, but the same words said another way are not. That was the intent. Rumble removed that video without explanation originally, so people suspected it was for some sort of anti-Semitic hate reason. Uh, the video was then reposted to Rumble. Rumble removed it again, and upon questioning, uh, Rumble sources said it was removed not for the viewpoint, but for a particular point in the rally when Nick said, quote, because we are willing to die in a holy war, we'll make them die in a holy war. And again, my understanding is that was uh, a reapplication of a Talmud text. Uh, at least that's that was the explanation. I am not uh, scholarly enough in the particular text to tell you if that's an accurate reinterpretation or not. But that was the explanation. Now, Rumble interprets that as an incitement to violence. And so the video was taken down. Rumble source uh, confirmed that they uh, and they they affirmed that they do not censor based on viewpoint but they do enforce basic legal guidelines of threats of violence. Now I'm not extremely alarmist about rumble on this one. I do think they made some mistakes. First of all, when they say that they are only taking down illegal speech, uh, what Nick said is in fact legally protected speech. It's not incitement because it's not specific enough to satisfy the legal threshold of incitement in the, in the U S Supreme Court standard for speech outside the First Amendment protection uh, is speech directed to inciting or producing imminent lawless action and speech and the speech is is likely to produce such an action. So both components necessary. 
Nick didn't make an imminent call that was likely to happen. Now, granted, it's it's up against the line. You're kind of towing the line there. Is that a call for violence? Fact of the matter is he is not and won't be legally charged because he did nothing illegal. So maybe Rumble is just trying to say, yeah, well, we want to steer clear of the line. So any advocacy of violence we're going to take down. And I can see how they distinguish that from that and just pure viewpoint. The problem there, though, is Rumble didn't provide any explanation up front. So my understanding is just that Rumble deleted the video without explanation. Everyone had to guess why they did it until some source from inside said something off the record. I think clearer communication from Rumble about the rules here would be beneficial. I should also note that Nick was not, in fact, banned. As far as I understand, it was just the video was taken down. His channel's not taken down. This is a slippery down. slope, though. Um, I, I think that Rumble remains in the right direction overall. Yeah, but if I, it's not illegal, it's it's protected free speech. That That's it. I, that's I, the I LaDonna understand. standard. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not against the law, ho. It's not. <laughs> what did he say? That there's, there's no way this meets any legal definition of incitement, any interpretation. It was so nonspecific. Um, and so that's, uh, this is what, what I don't understand about these companies. Like they're, they're obviously trying to propagandize the population because they could just adhere to the legal standard and then they wouldn't have to do any of this dancing. Now, would they, uh, if rumble, if, if rumble said, listen, there was uh, we had law enforcement approach us about this particular claim. Uh, we have reason to believe there's an investigation and or a charge pending. I fully understand their position. I, I do understand their position if they say we're going to stay, stay clear of that and just say advocacy of violence, even if general and not specific to meet the incitement standard. That's where we're drawing the line. That's fine, I guess. But could you please it's are, gross. could you please explain that when you make these these ban moves and then we'll all decide how we're going to interact with those rules. But I don't want to I don't want to be all I don't want to act like a, a rumble doomer. I think that this is uh, a misstep. I think that they're aimed in the, the right direction generally. I hope that they maybe learn a thing or two from this particular episode and carry on in the right direction. But they don't want the bad press from having a perceived anti-Semite on their platform. That's what this is about. And so they're going to hide behind some obvious misinterpretation of the legal standard of incitement. But and then be like, Ooh, well, if that was the case, they, they could have taken his channel out outright and they didn't. There would have been too much backlash from that. I'm telling Careful. you, this is this is these are things to come. It's always um, Nick Fuentes, too. If they Which continue, is funny because he's so wholesome and funny. <laughs> Adorable. I, I don't know. Yeah. If, I, In fairness, I have not seen the entire stream. Um, I don't know if I would describe that stream as wholesome, but... Uh, <laughs> it was. What are you some, talking about? Had some, What's um, more wholesome? Had some interesting graphical choices and uh, and all that, but, uh, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, that's where it stands with Rumble. And um, as far as I know, that's the end of that particular story. We also have um, potential creeping, if not censorship, censorship adjacent moves coming from, I would say, Twitter. But now it's going to be X. Elon Musk has been tweeting all weekend saying oh, it's going to be the birds are going away. We're changing to X. Uh, so I don't know what's going on with, uh, well, X or Twitter is is making some sort of move to appease advertisers. They're rolling out a new hate speech policy to make sure advertisers yeah. are comfortable. Elon is so base that he put a leftist woman in charge. And now she's making these base moves like uh, unveiling new safety features that allow advertisers to decide what content on which they want to advertise, which it sounds fair, but it's they're called adjacency controls. And it's just a way for advertisers to be like, this kind of content is acceptable and this kind of content is not acceptable. You know, that they lost 50 percent of their advertising revenue. Yeah, if it's if it's just uh, sort of a menu option for advertisers to say, I would like to advertise here, but not there. I don't necessarily have a huge problem with that. The, but we the, can't do that. Yeah. But the problem, too, I would love that on YouTube if if they gave us yeah. the the people who are hosting the ads, the same options as the advertisers might have. That would be great. I, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. The danger is sort of tangential that uh, the advertisers are going to be selecting which sort of material Twitter is more incentivized to promote or favor because there are dollar signs attached to that. And the question becomes what becomes the fate of the rest of us who don't have large dollar signs attached to our content. Now, maybe Elon Musk will navigate that in good faith and 
maintain the financial health of the company while protecting what he views as a, as a very important fundamental principle in free speech. But I, uh, I have my concerns admittedly. Yeah. When, when are content creators going to be able to decide what ads are run on their content? When is that going to happen? Maybe he'll when can I be out. like, listen, white people only <laughs> on the ads <laughs> that are run. There's on no my, such I thing mean, as an ad with what only white people. In it. I know, what what decade are you watch, living I'm in? Like, do white people not even eat pizza or use cell phones No, only anymore? gay, like, interracial, Muslim, disabled families do that. It's so crazy. And then yeah. these minorities they're finding, it's always like some half black, half Irish chick with freckles or whatever. I'm That's like, true. What it it looks it? like, uh, well, I would say like, um, like, like carrot top, little mermaid or something like that. But that's basically Rachel Dole is all she would probably do a great job. She, if she hadn't outed herself or been yeah. outed as white, she probably would have great career opportunity. And that bitch can run ads on my channel. I don't care. Doing tied ads. She can run ads for her fantastic yeah. artwork. I do love Rachel Dole. Is all Maybe like we it. should reach out to her, see if we can make a deal. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else on X or Twitter? No, tell me about this North Korea story. I, I was reading about it and I don't quite understand why he would do this. There's pretty much, well, there's a lot of mystery to it. I don't know if it's quite on the level of Carly Russell, but it's bizarre. Uh, yeah, a U.S. soldier just ran across the border into North Korea this week, remains detained. North Korea saying absolutely nothing about it. 23-year-old Army Private Travis King just ditched some sort of tour of the DMZ the de demilitarized zone between North Korea and South Korea. He just bailed into North Korea on Tuesday with little new information since Travis King was stationed in South Korea with the army, but recently served two months in prison on assault charges. Reports say King punched a South Korean national in a club in September, and then he was combative during arrest and he kicked a police car causing damage. He was released. None to of that seems like it's that big of a deal. I, yeah, I mean, like it's, escape to North Korea, they you're going to get in trouble. And he was just released by South Korean authorities to U.S. officials a week ago. So he was right. set to return to the U.S. to face military discipline. Um, and, and that's uh, he was actually headed out at the time he bailed to North Korea. The report I saw said he was actually escorted through airport security, somehow escaped his escort, made his way out of the terminal back to the DMZ, somehow joined this tour group. And then cross the border on Friday. There were some new details that emerged that may provide clues about why he did this um, official motive for entering North Korea is still unknown, but um, he, he failed to report for his daily formation on September 4th. Uh, and when reached away from the base stated that he quote, refused to return to post or America. So he had previously so expressed some sort of desire to, escape the United States as part of all of this, I guess. Is he a um, pedophile or something? I don't understand. Yeah, this maybe can't possibly just be for ideological purposes or like, oh man, I face like low level justice for punching a guy. I think I'll try North oh. Korea. Of course, the fear is uh, that he is going to be tortured for the purposes of creating propaganda in North Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, U S officials do not believe that King planned his escape with North Korean officials but of course, North Korea is saying nothing about it at all. <laughs> and even though it appears this guy bailed to North Korea intentionally or given that fact, I suppose, I fully expect Joe Biden's team is hard at work thinking of what sort of king's ransom they can give away to get this guy. Maybe we'll give away every terrorist that we have in our custody to make sure that we yeah. get this uh, guy who intentionally bailed on us to go to North Korea, much like the Brittany Griner deal. I'm sure they're. They've got their top negotiators working on it right now. There's more to the story. I bet North Korean officials were involved. Maybe. Maybe there was some, maybe he had contact with somebody and there's some sort of reason we don't understand. Because it does maybe seem he's like being a, hailed as a king there and he's like super rich and just hanging out with top officials all the time, like banging hot Korean women. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe there's some deal we're not aware of. But uh but lastly, before we get into the Trump news, um, the Supreme Court is, of course, on quite a streak of magic tricks and white pills and reversing past betrayals of the Constitution. Do <laughs> they have one more rabbit in their hat? I bet. They seem pretty motivated. Derek Chauvin, the police officer of George Floyd fame, reportedly is requesting the U.S. Supreme Court to review his second degree murder conviction in Minnesota. This after the Minnesota Supreme Court declined to hear his appeal this week. 
The central issue of the appeal is keeping the trial in Minneapolis, where Chauvin's legal team uh, says he he couldn't get a fair trial due to pretrial publicity. I don't doubt that there's some truth to that, but there's also the fact that an activist juror lied his way onto the bench. There's the fact that George Floyd fentanyled himself out of his own existence. There's the fact that the autopsy didn't show any physical trauma. None of those are apparently the lead with the appeal, which is which is weird to me because the venue argument seems like the weakest. But I guess they're the lawyers and not me. Uh, most likely outcome, of course, is, is the Supreme Court probably just declines this request, which means Chauvin serves the rest of his 22 and a half years prison sentence if he doesn't die in prison beforehand. Uh, who knows, though? Maybe one more um, bright illumination of the Clarence Thomas laser eyes is uh, in store. Well, uh, at this point, it is just routine, so I don't want to spend... It's weird to say, former president has been... Uh, charged and charged and charged with all sorts of crimes, but that's actually not that newsworthy because it should be. But man, it's like uh, you start to feel like a broken record at this point because these people are broken records. It's not shocking. It's not surprising. It is routine at this point. Another week, another set of forthcoming criminal charges for former President Donald Trump. Um, And we're supposed to believe that he obviously did all of these criminal things, unlike any other past president. And this has nothing to do with with Central powers setting the stage for 2024. Um, And of course, as it already stands, Trump faces a felony charge in New York for the supposed fraudulent record keeping regarding the hush money payment to Stormy Daniels. Trump faces 37 felony charges in the federal classified documents case. Now we have word of charges coming in the January 6th case and the Georgia election interference case, too. But first, uh, a date has been set for his uh, for his classified documents case. And it is amazing how all the stars align for exactly what is needed politically while we are told and we're supposed to believe that this is all rule of law and no politics. The trial date has now been set for the classified documents case uh, lines up perfectly to to juice Trump in the primary and then imprison him for the general. May 2024 is the time. So this is right after Trump very likely secures the nomination And right before the general election campaign hits full swing. So uh, really, though, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, this might just be a move for parity. It's like Biden is is going to campaign through Zoom calls from his basement again. Trump has to campaign through Zoom calls from a jail cell. It's just just making things (laughs) fair. Um, But in fairness as to how this played out. Prosecutors did actually want uh, a faster schedule. They wanted the trial to hit in December before the primaries, but the judge has now pushed it back. Trump's lawyers wanted to delay the trial until after the general election, but the judge rejected that too. Okay, so that's where that stands. Now we have charges uh, incoming for the January 6th case. Of course, the classified documents case that we just discussed, that's pursuant to the investigation of special counsel Jack Smith. Well, guess what? He's also got another investigation, January 6th. And um, as is tradition, the details at least were leaked. Trump made this announcement on Truth Social earlier in the week, and then the details of what these charges may be leaked through the New York Times this week. Uh, And so um, the contents of this letter that uh, Jack Smith and company sent sent to Trump outlined three possible areas for charge or three statutory bases or bases on which to charge him. So Trump is under scrutiny for conspiracy to defraud the government, obstruction of an official proceeding, and a section of federal law that makes it a crime to conspire to threaten or intimidate any person from the free exercise of any constitutional right. In this case, presumably voting. Now, Notably, that last law. Do you remember the case of Douglas Mackey, the uh, the guy they said who yes. went, he went to prison for memes, which he yes, he, yeah. he um he was known as Ricky Vaughn on Twitter. Ricky back Vaughn, in the day. yeah. That's and right. that case, uh, he was just sentenced uh, only a few months ago, or convicted rather. I'm not sure if he's. I think he did get sentenced. Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, um, in his case, he made memes on Twitter. That said, it was the classic recurring joke everyone's seen a million times. Hey, Hillary voters, did you know that you can vote by text message? Hashtag stand with her right, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. These Obvious were, in joke. fairness, these were more dressed up. 
They did borrow Hillary Clinton campaign imagery. You might have had some intellectual property infringement with these particular memes. Uh, but the idea that that joking about false election information or even saying uh, false election information is some sort of conspiracy to deprive another person of a constitutional right warranting years and years in prison. That's how they got Douglas Mackey. That is apparently, uh, at least they have some kind of theory similar to that to try to get Trump. Now, I'm not even sure how that would apply because all of the rhetoric they don't like from Trump about the election being stolen, Mm -hmm. that was all post-election day. So how in God's name did he conspire to deprive people of their right to vote if all of his complaints... And claims in question happened after people had their chance to vote. I don't understand how they're going to make that case, but that is um, apparently what they're going to try to do. So we have, uh, in in more plain terms, the claims here will be encouraging people to interrupt the certification of the vote uh, because that's an official proceeding. Uh, And and because that's an official proceeding, that's defrauding the government, too. Mm -hmm. And then somehow we're going to say that he denied or deprived people of their voting rights. Yep. And and notably, these charges are somewhat tame, actually, at least relative to what might have otherwise been expected. This is not the home run swing for seditious conspiracy or some sort of treason that we might have thought they'd go for. Uh, that type of charge would would or could theoretically block Trump from running, according to their theory that the 14th Amendment would block him from federal office. Sounds like they're not even attempting that, though, at least as is officially understood now so that's the january 6th case you have any uh, thoughts about that before i talk about georgia what do you think the feasibility of this is i mean democrats aren't good at um at biding their time and doing these things at the most opportune moment they seem to kind of shoot their wad and like and do the biggest thing first that's what they did in the lead up um to trump and so i'm not convinced that any of these cases or more robust than the initial indictment. It seems like they're just throwing everything against the wall. I don't think that they really have anything here. None of this seems substantive. It would seem the classified documents case is the strongest that they have. Yeah, of course, that's not super great, though. Well, I guess it depends on your definition of of great relative to the Stormy Daniels case. And this case for sure stronger. (laughs) It has its own problems, though. Of course, they have this uh, they have their their tape of Trump saying, which, you know, what it's a the quote is bad. It's Trump saying, as president, I could have declassified this. Uh, I didn't. But uh, here it is. Have a look. The document that he's talking about, they have not been able to produce. It's not actually part of the case. So they're kind of and kill this so shot easily comes back on Biden. Though. Um, yeah, but well, as we'll get to with Hunter, Biden, that doesn't matter. Coming back on Biden, I mean, who gives a rat's ass about that? No, with Biden's classification issues himself, and then this thing with with Hunter Biden is a disaster. Like this seems really brazen of the left. I don't think any of it's going to gain traction. Maybe these are just the warm up. Maybe they have a big one coming. We'll we see. always say that though, and they never do. Well, how about this one? How about Georgia election yeah, interference activities? Yeah, so for months. Yeah. Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis in Georgia has been saying that uh, a charging decision on Trump's case uh, there was imminent. Well, it now appears that may actually be the case. Remember months ago, uh, there was that crazy eyed jury for woman who did a CNN interview, a few media interviews. And she was yeah, she was heavily implying that they recommended charges for Trump (laughs) without saying it, because, of course, she would face legal consequences if she did. Well, that's what happens in Georgia. A grand jury, they get to recommend. But the decision to charge remains with the district attorney. That's Fannie Willis in this case. So the Guardian reports Friday that those charges are coming next month, according to two sources. And the charge will be racketeering, as in the existence of a criminal enterprise and a pattern of fraudulent activity that is predicated (laughs) on at least two qualifying crimes. So that's a mess of a lot of ingredients. What are the qualifying crimes? The sources say those will be witness tampering and computer trespass. And that's a new angle that I haven't heard. Trump hacked Georgia, apparently, but they have some more specifics here. On the witness tampering, presumably that's going to be trying to influence Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to find votes, which was the nature of that phone call in question. Maybe there are some other ingredients in play there. But on the computer trespass, uh, the sources say that this charge or this component of the charge is going to involve Uh, breach of voting machines in coffee county 
these apparently were Trump operatives paid by his lawyer, Sidney Powell, accessing the voting machines and copying sensitive voting system data. The data were then uploaded to a password protected site where election deniers could download the materials. So my guess is the actually the the acquisition the acquiring of the data was fine the dispute here is the storage and distribution of it I, I, the big question here if Sidney powell hacked the voting machines if that's what you're telling me doesn't that prove that they could be hacked i thought Sidney powell was crazy for saying such things yeah. now you're saying no Sidney powell did it i i, I don't know mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not fully understanding the details here of what exactly they're alleging because there's no way that Sidney powell uh if Sidney Powell stole data from Coffee County, I assume Sidney Powell would would be facing charges for that herself, and I'm not aware of that. Aren't so, they concerned they're going to mobilize the base? They seem well, I think that's exactly their plan. It's like, hey, juice up Trump for for uh, the 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 primary, and then we can uh, put him in prison for the general. <sighs> they, they, I cannot imagine they think they're going to be successful. Uh, come back to that. Come back to that uh, next summer. We'll see what the status is. Um, but it, it's, yeah, it's just throw everything against the wall, see what sticks. Um, there is an important distinction to be made in this Georgia case and the New York Stormy Daniels case, and that's that they're state cases. So if Trump gets convicted uh, in the classified documents case or the January 6th case, he could theoretically pardon himself if he was elected president. There's some legal dispute about that, but that's how that would go. I'm sure he'd at least attempt it. Or the next president, let's say Ron DeSantis or somebody was uh, elected, they could pardon him because those are federal cases. If Trump gets convicted and sentenced and jailed in New York or Georgia, the president has no pardon power on that. So that's why we have a realistic prospect of a major party candidate running for president, uh, president from prison. Um, we, we, it's, it's certainly something that, uh, that could happen given this circumstance here. Uh, but all of that, uh, assumes the scenario that the matrix will in fact allow Trump to win at least, uh, the federal pardoning. And, and I don't, uh, I don't know that the matrix will allow such things currently. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, the, the other the other scenario, too, what if Trump is in state prison in Georgia or New York and actually wins? <laughs> then you have the president He's in so wild. prison, but he can't really get out. Mm. How is that handled legally? I have no idea. That, Unprecedented. Obviously, I hope for all of this to go away because it's politically motivated nonsense. But as far as the theater of watching how that would play out politically, I'm I'm definitely tuning in. That's going to be fascinating. Yeah. Okay, let's talk uh, a couple of the, uh, well, some of the antics in in Congress this week. Um, Because on Wednesday, we had the second IRS whistleblower in the Hunter Biden case uh, go public in a hearing before the House Oversight Committee. He is Joseph Zeigler, a 13-year IRS special agent with the IRS Criminal Investigation Division, and he personally worked on the Hunter Biden case. And he joined Gary Shapley, who's also an IRS agent on the Hunter case, who was previously public with his identity. And we have talked this case in detail, so I'm not going to start from the beginning. But the headline level points are two. Um, According to these guys, Biden family companies have raked in over $17 million in unexplained payments from foreign sources over the last decade, including while Joe was vice president. Primarily uh, China, Ukraine, Romania are the sources of this money. So Zeigler joined Shapley. uh, Also, uh, Zeigler joined Shapley in saying that the Hunter Biden investigation was held back throughout uh, as David Weiss, the U.S. attorney for Delaware, uh, as in he was uh, held back and controlled by Merrick Garland, the Justice Department and other U.S. attorneys. So he's corroborating a lot of the claims that we've heard in in prior weeks and months. And so... um, Recall uh, one of the key claims of the original whistleblower, Gary Shapley. He said there was a meeting last October with investigators and U.S. Attorney Weiss, again, the guy supposedly in charge of the investigation with the full prosecutorial authority, said Merrick Garland. Weiss told the me- his investigators privately at this meeting, listen, man, I'm not in charge. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff I want to do, but I can't do it. That's what they're saying. Shapley produced some evidence in the form of meeting notes that he took 
that were confirmed as accurate by other meeting attendees through email at the time. Now, Weiss has since denied that he was held back in any way in multiple letters to Congress. But Zeigler now joins Shapley on the record saying Weiss was held back. And he says, we still need a special counsel to investigate the Hunter Biden case independently from Merrick Garland and the DOJ. I will also note that while the impression has been conveyed by the U.S. attorney in Delaware that he has similar powers to that of a special counsel in this case, free reign to do as needed, that was not the case. It appeared to me, based on what I experienced, that the U.S. attorney in Delaware in our investigation was constantly hamstrung, limited, and marginalized by DOJ officials as well as other U.S. attorneys. I still think that a special counsel is necessary for this investigation. He uh, prefaced his comments with, just so you know, I'm gay and a Democrat. I'm very gay. This is just like when I came out. Man, it was, it was frustrating. I I appreciate what they're doing in, in truth telling. Don't get me wrong. But it when everything is prefaced with, look how gay I am, I start to get annoyed. But he's just playing by the rules that they set. He's trying to appeal to them. Uh. And it may not have just been protection for Hunter Biden that motivated the the alleged denial of special counsel status. Real Clear Politics investigative reporter Paul Sperry says this week that by rejecting any special counsel, Merrick Garland is protecting himself, actually, according to congressional investigators. He uh, Sperry says his sources say A.G. Garland refused to appoint a special counsel to investigate Hunter Biden because a special counsel would have stumbled on the obstruction of justice that occurred in Garland's own department as outlined by the IRS agents. So maybe the initial motive was to protect Hunter, but if these sources are correct, it's well beyond that at this point, it's cover up of the cover up mode that we're witnessing. That makes Um, more sense. I mean, you think that even Biden would have thrown Hunter under the bus. Why why would he Hunter is the smartest man he knows. What a stupid thing to say. Hunter also makes the best homemade porn that (laughs) Joe Biden knows. (laughs) Uh, The meeting's most outrageous moment came when Marjorie Taylor Greene displayed still images of Hunter Biden homemade sex tapes. She did have her reasons for doing this, but uh, it was still quite a surprise to see a picture in a congressional chamber of the president's son getting blown by some type of exotic hooker. This, (laughs) This was the scene. Before we begin, I would like to let the committee and everyone watching at home that parental discretion is advised. This is evidence uh, of of Hunter Biden making sex. Excuse me, this is my time. Making pornography. Should we be displaying this, Mr. Chairman? Did the committee? Did a lady's time's expired and uh, went two and a half minutes over? Okay. Now, um, (laughs) there are countless examples of bad leftist memes. I will credit some of them. I'll credit some of them that I can't even actually show on the stream, but there were pretty good photoshops of Hunter Biden's sex photos with Marjorie Taylor Greene photoshopped onto the women with whom Hunter was engaging. And those, those were pretty funny. I got to admit. Uh, but it wasn't just for shock, though. Marjorie Taylor Greene says that uh, she was making the point that trafficking women for the purpose of prostitution is a federal crime. And as far as I understand, she's correct about that. These mm-hmm. images and other evidence should merit other charges for Hunter as well, is her point. Um, but uh, but, but and just, to be fair, before that slide, what preceded that slide was her um, showing all of the logs of Hunter flying out this prostitute in June 2018. Ah, he, yes. clearly, he clearly did violate the Mann Act. Yeah. Um, so she's on to something, although that was clearly for shock value, but yeah, uh, it looks like a uh, hunter's lawyer is going to file a, or already has filed an ethics complaint against it was, it, it was too <laughs> offensive. Even for Hunter, he has to uh, yeah. reclaim his dignity. So there was a Biden's lawyer wrote a letter to the congressional, um, office of ethics claiming that her actions blatantly violate house ethics rules and standards of official conduct. Your colleague has lowered herself and by extension, the entire House of Representatives, because, you know, so upstanding to a new level of abhorrent behavior that blatantly violates House ethics rules and standards of official conduct conduct. Um, If the OCE takes its responsibility seriously, it will promptly and decisively condemn and discipline Miss Green for her latest action. She probably will get in some trouble for this. 
I I don't know, man. I can't if if uh, it would be up to Republican leadership at this point, I would assume. Or it's well, it's the it's the office of the office of congressional ethics. I guess I don't know exactly how that works out. Is that a non partisan type thing or bipartisan type thing? Then maybe. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I wish that one person in Congress kind of had it all. Like, I like that she did this, but also she's insane. And so I don't I don't really know where I stand on on any of this. These Marjorie Taylor Greene antics. I'm here for the fun, man. As far as I'm concerned, there's no more dignity left to protect. I'm all for it. It is. This is this is all undignified. Like the idea that we even have an office of congressional ethics is so laughable at this point. Uh, I mean, they just found blow in the White House and people are like, oh, you can't show these pictures that everybody has seen of what Hunter Biden is doing. Yeah, my guess is they, like everybody else, have moved more into the business of cover up than actual uh, transparency. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Anyway, uh, last notable meeting uh, from this um, from this Hunter Biden whistleblower hearing. Uh, Dan Goldman, a Democrat congressman, was trying to demonstrate that Joe has nothing to do with any of this while using Joe having at least something to do with it as evidence. And uh, well, in the process, debunking a key Biden lie. So recall Joe and his staff have said for years at this point that uh, Joe and Hunter have never discussed business. And sure, Hunter may have made some mistakes here and there, but Joe has never known anything about it, at least in the business context because Joe and Hunter have never discussed business. Now, never mind the voicemail from Joe that was recovered from the laptop saying, hey, you're in the clear as far as those Chinese business investigations. Never mind the text message to the Chinese businessman with Hunter saying, you better pay me because I'm sitting here right next to my dad and he's going to beat you up. They have <laughs> never discussed business, the two. Not once. So Dan Goldman was questioning IRS whistleblower Gary Shapley. Uh, noting an instance of uh, within Shapley's testimony where Shapley was describing Joe Biden showing up to a lunch meeting between Hunter Biden and uh, Chinese energy businessmen and some other people. It, it's hard to believe even based on that premise that Joe just showed up to a meeting between Hunter and Chinese businessmen and nobody discussed business. So we'll just leave it at that. But Goldman says that Rob Walker, who's a Biden business partner, said that Hunter walked up to Joe and Hunter said, hey, dad, meet these Chinese energy businessmen. I'm thinking of doing a startup with them. And Dan Goldman says this is evidence that Joe had no involvement at all. And then you describe a lunch, what we, touch, what we talked about earlier, where uh, Joe Biden came to say hello at the Four Seasons Hotel to a uh, lunch that he was having with CEFC executives, right? But what you didn't talk about is uh, what Rob Walker said the origination of that lunch was. And you testified that he said to, to that Hunter told his dad, according to Rob Walker, quote, I may be trying to start a company or try to do something with these guys. That doesn't sound much like Joe Biden was involved in whatever Hunter Biden was doing with the CEFC if Hunter Biden is telling him that he's trying to do business with them, does it? No, but it does show that he said he told his father he was trying to do business and he was okay. talking. Well, that is true. Hunter Biden does try to do business. That's correct. Don't not only have no direct evidence connecting Joe Biden to any of Hunter Biden's business deal, you actually had proof that he wasn't involved. What a spectacular self-own. <laughs> Uh, no direct evidence of Joe's connections to Hunter's business at all, as demonstrated by Joe showing up to one of Hunter's business meetings. Thank you. Yeah. Well done. Um, but even if we grant the supposed point that this conversation, because Joe appears to have lacked information as the conversation is characterized, even if that's the case, um, number one, it directly contradicts Joe's key defense claim that we just mentioned. I've never discussed business except for this time. Number two, it just defies basic reason to think that Joe was just there to say hello to Chinese businessmen and nothing more. Just move along after that. And, and number three, a reminder, this is just one case. This is Chinese energy. The Bidens, we know, are also getting money from Ukraine and Romania. So even if this disproves corruption with the Chinese, which it doesn't, but let's say it does, how do you explain the Ukrainians and, and the Romanians? What is the explanation there? No direct evidence, 
Okay. Anyway, that's all I got on Hunter Biden stuff. Um, there was also the uh, the Chuck Grassley released that uh, FBI informant file on Thursday that detailed uh, all of the specifics of how he of this informant says that. Uh, Joe and Hunter were personally paid $10 million by uh, Burisma executives to make that inconvenient Ukrainian prosecutor, Viktor Shokin, go away. A full detail of, of all of those uh, allegations and another piece of non-evidence uh, as far as we're supposed to consider it. But I posted about that yesterday, if you'd like a full breakdown of that particular development. So I won't revisit that. But Anything else before we take a break? It doesn't matter how much evidence there is or their level of morality breached it's like no one gives a shit it's just every every presidency it's it's more and more shocking and people are increasingly desensitized to to levels of corruption somehow it this would. degenerate family has reached uh some sort of godlike status people it's, have a, it's incredible a misplaced like, religion in them we're like the you know the 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 frog in the in the boiling water we've reached african levels of corruption and everybody's like oh this is normal it's always been this way i mean or there's it, there's it no has always been this way to some degree though i i, I remain uh, it's not just the justification for oh that's normal because x y and z it's the statements like no evidence it's like you have to yeah there's you're, so you're purposely much evidence. blinding yourself if that's the case um anyway uh we'll get into the rfk hearing and then we'll talk uh we got that Fargo cop shooting. We got Carly Russell. We got plenty coming up, but uh, it's a good time to take a break and catch up with our chat. So uh, I'll start over on Rumble here. The M dub says, can we take a moment to appreciate the stupidity of private King for fleeing the army and going to North Korea? He could have just waited to get back to Texas and go to Mexico. North Korea is not known for liking blacks. That is another component of it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Is, 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 are there going to be racial elements to his treatment once he gets there? But maybe you're right. Maybe there's some they deal. They love Dennis Rodman over there, though. That's true. I forgot about that. So yeah. maybe he has some connection we don't know about. He must have done something just terrible that we're yet to find out about. Hmm. Yakko says, I saw the Oppenheimer movie. It's very well acted. It'll win Oscars galore, but it's three hours long. Christopher Nolan is huffing his own farts at this point. Time to bring back the intermission. Uh, I haven't seen Barbie. I haven't seen Oppenheimer. I I haven't seen any movies outside of the ones that you guys make me watch for the movie review segment. So until then, I assume it's filled with propaganda. Uh, I don't, the, the the basic plot is what the guy who designed the atomic bomb. The atomic bomb. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's all I know about it. Stick sent me here says, um, <laughs> "Can I say this? I don't think this is a racial slur of any kind." Richard Parker is a cotton headed ninny muggins. That does sound like four racial slurs, but I think it's no racial slurs. Yeah, I, I don't think it's any. I, I'll leave that dispute between you and Richard Parker. Thank you, Stick sent me here. Hottie Twerkman says some good news from Portland. White liberal kids wrecked the place. Greenbrier uh, built a leasing subsidiary, a huge quarter three earnings surprise, and dividend increase led. Um, shares to gain 32% on June 29th. Okay, so I, I, that's a lot of information to take in, but you're saying that some somebody has figured out how to capitalize on some of the destruction of the city? Is that what you're saying? I'll have to look into that. That's news to me. Thanks for the information. Uh, Antisocial Grunt says, Dear Matt and Blonde, my, uh, me and my wife have just had our first baby, little Aurora Wren. She is looking Ooh, forward to... Her not listening for a few years wise choice um don't worry me and mama will wait uh, raise her right well congratulations that's great oh, and um sweet all the best to your family and when we were doing the baby naming app that i was describing ren was a surprise agreement w-r-e-n i don't know that we're gonna like pick it because there are a whole bunch under consideration but ren is uh, underrated that's a cool name do you have a front runner who will really share um yeah we do for a girl our front runner is quinn oh that's right yeah i love it we don't necessarily have a boy front runner mm. i have a lot of terrible picks where i look through these things and i suddenly think animal names are cool like oh yeah bear like bear grills or like that's wolf my or toxic something. trait, trait yeah. <laughs> yeah oh did i like even tell the audience Blitzer. that i'm having a girl oh I, forgot, I should have put that in the front that's right we announced it on well, you announced it on wednesday 
was that on Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. So I'm pregnant with a little girl and I am going to unilaterally push through the name Daisy. My husband doesn't like it. And I kind of don't care because I've been so sick. I'm going to leverage my sickness. Congratulations, butthead. <laughs> You've earned it. It's going to be Daisy, baby Daisy. I, I like the name Daisy. Um, uh, that is not my wife does not not to out her, but we don't have agreement on it. And so Daisy has my been main, out for me for a long time. People have been like, well, she's never going to be able to have a real career. And I'm like, awesome. Because of right. the name Daisy. It is a an eternally youthful name. It's like naming your daughter Kelsey or, you know, something in that vein. But I don't give a shit. I love it. I think it's adorable. And I hope that she's never taken seriously in a career field. <laughs> and I kind of don't care. So that is great. I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Anti-social grunt. Congratulations. All the best to you and your family. Oh, he has one more. 200 character limit. Just wanted to finish by saying thank you too for all you do. You're a weekly staple in our house. Always great thorough coverage and a fun listen. Thanks Aww, for the last four years. Well, you. I appreciate that very much. And congratulations to your family. Congratulations. Sorry for stealing your thunder. I, that was implied. JD1492. Uh, you guys think uh, during the Republican primary, we'll see another ghost primary like Iowa on the Dem side in 2020. Like DeSantis declares himself the winner during prime time and news cycle spins it um the only situation which i could see that happening i guess is like trump prematurely declaring his own victory but i know there's a lot of time between now and january uh, february and all that i something is going to have to radically change for trump not Mm. to get this nomination i just don't see it i don't see the path for for even desantis and desantis is your most likely non-trump candidate so I don't even think there has to, there, yeah. shenanigans or whatever need not apply. I think that people are, are for better or worse, they are very motivated to vote for Trump, both because they love the man and they hate the people who are mistreating him, who are weaponizing every system of government against him. I, I don't even think that's like a fault of DeSantis or anybody else. It's just you can't match that yeah. energy, the energy yeah. of hatred for the system that has turned itself on Trump as its target. There's nothing you can do to overcome that. But maybe I'll eat my words in January when Trump loses to somebody else. That would be very surprised. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one is a trap. Hey, Matt, do you know who stole Owen's bike? I have no idea. I, I just, he said the N-word. I have, I have no idea. I couldn't tell you. Uh, all right, we're good on Rumble. We're good on uh, Odyssey, uh, Odyssey. Good on DLive. If you want to catch up uh, with a few on YouTube and Tippy, we'll hop back into the news. I'm holding Mulray. There was a chat. Wait, did you just tell me to catch up? I, I yeah, no, we'll, we definitely got to get some off YouTube and okay, Tippy. Okay, good, good. Um, there was a chat Wednesday night about Jesus not having kids. It wouldn't have been a sin for him to marry and make a family, but he had a mission, and I suspect he wouldn't want to leave a widow and orphans. Yes. If any of you have a mission that's more important than that of Jesus Christ, I implore you to suspend procreation. Yeah, yeah I forget the exact context on Wednesday, but you hear that new tradist. God bless it. How do you say that he has excellent calls? I, I appreciate his contributions. You say that know, like he's a reason, mess. I, I know I was just so seething after our conversation. My, my pregnancy hormones are, they're making me really insane. <laughs> I fully understand. I, I had questions about fatherhood years ago, back when the forces, uh, the propaganda forces against it were not nearly as strong as they are now. I fully understand why young men have all sorts of questions about whether fatherhood is right for them, but I promise you it is. But he is, he's, he's been unpropagandized. He's, he's totally red pilled. You just think that his mission to write philosophy on the beach of Mexico is more important than procreation. I detest this, this idea in young men. I, I just hate it. Oh, get back on the plantation. <laughs> well, Holden I'm, Lord, I'm um, new Trentis, Thank you for your calls. I'm sorry. You were defamed in this way. He's going to text me. Uh, finally, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. It's Hebrew 4. Hmm. Also, Though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Yes, I mean, we have to think about why he was sent in the form of man so that we could understand him and try to emulate him. That's why. Um, uh, Robin D. Banks, 
at Knuckle Hunky Buck and I once made love. He filled me with love like four Fargo cops, but still managed to finish him off before he could snack bar me. <sighs> at least the fifth time, nearly an explosive event. You guys, I still have more. That's not my concern. Please don't do this to me. I bought PN no note. She's going to barf. She thought she was past the barfing, but of course she's not. Thank you, I bought. Oh, God. I am not going to be niggardly. 14 weeks. I still can't. I can't believe this is still happening. Uh, Tanap or V. Any advice? My last relationship ended on a sour note. We haven't talked in two and a half years. Now she might leave town forever. I'd like to clear things up, but I'm currently in a very happy relationship. I don't know. I guess I don't really understand this, like, ending a chapter, that, like, looking for closure. I think that looking for closure, it's a woman thing. And it's really just a way for us to kind of slide into the DMs of our exes. Like, no one really needs closure on their relationship that's going to be found through talking, right? The closure I, on your relationship, it was breaking up. Yeah, I would say in general, I, I would advise against it just to you have you have what you're looking for. You're happy with it. There's no need yeah. for entanglement. You're not talking to this person. The only exception I might offer is if you believe that you did something horribly wrong. Like you and you, you want to apologize. And that's or, your only if motive. you're seeking yeah. if you're seeking an apology or um, you want them to validate your experience and that's why you're finding closure, I'd be like, no. Yeah. But if you, if you acted badly and you want to like, be like, I'm a better man now, I'm with somebody I love, blah, 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 blah. And if everything in your conversation was like a, a conversation that your current partner could read and not be super pissed about, then it's yeah. probably fine. I mean, let's put it this way. I, I look back at my prior relationships and, and, even though I think I was wronged in many ways, I recognize that I was not the man I should have been in many ways too. And if I could have conversations with several of those women speaking candidly, I would say I did not take the leadership role that you deserved. I did not, I, I was not the proper man for you at the time. And I hope that I I've grown into that now, but I wasn't then I've never contacted any of those women to say that because it's not that I did something wrong to them. It's just, I failed to fulfill what my role and my potential was, but that does not and generally mean people going learn to talk to from them from relationships now. and they move on. Like I did this with somebody that I did like or treated really badly a long time ago. And he was like, I am a better man for you treating me like shit. Like hmm. I learned how to deal with unmanageable women and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. They're sitting around grateful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that people are, you break up and you have all these raw emotions. You feel like you're going to feel like that forever. But a year later, you're like, eh. and you kind of take the lessons and you move on. Everybody does that no matter how bad your relationship was. Tired, so tired. Because Blonde was responsible for implementing the wild card option. You motherfuckers. It is only fitting their list is consistently rejected. Do the right thing and end the wild card option. Wild card option. Four, four, four. Yeah. Okay. So I see that my, that my documentary, my excellent list of documentaries was rejected. Only for a documentary that nobody wants to watch. Uh, I've seen it and, and I like it, but there were others that I was looking forward to seeing. Yeah. Okay. Um, Touching the Void is 400 times better than Free Solo. It is. There are more life lessons. There's, it's more interesting and compelling story. Like, I don't understand. You guys spited us out of a better life experience. It is just a meme thing at this point. And the reason the reasons that Wildcard has to stay Number one, it motivates the movie nominators to make good selections. Yeah. And so they are accountable. Uh, but number two, for people who don't like any of the nominations, it offers them something to vote for affirmatively as well. And in general, in defense of the wild card, it is rarely deployed. In fact, I, I could go back and audit the last 25, 50 movies. I bet it's probably it, been once or twice. It, yeah, we're talking like I bet under 5% of the movies we watch or wildcard selection. So it's just a meme thing against blonde at this point, primarily. I, I don't know. I thought your documentary picks were perfectly fine to be honest, but have you seen touching the void? Yes, I have. I haven't seen pumping oh. iron. I haven't seen the grizzly guy one. Uh, and pumping but... iron is such a fun watch too. Everybody loves Arnold. God, come anyway, on, guys, we got to get back to it. So, okay. uh, thank you guys for your chats. We'll come back to them at the um, uh, end. I'll of the have stream. to just circle back with you. We got to get back into the news. Because that wasn't the only uh, bit of entertainment in Congress this week. I'll have to be quick with this one because we got a bunch of other stuff to talk about. Um, but on Thursday, the House Select Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government hosted RFK Jr. to testify about the censorship of his anti-vaccine activism. 
RFK Jr. is, of course, also running for president as a Democrat, currently averaging about 14 percent support among Democrat voters um, in in polling aggregations. So RFK Jr. had a lot to say at this hearing, but in the interest of time, I want to focus more on what his Democrat opponents in Congress had to say, because it's very revealing about what they think of you and what sort of respect they have for your rights or rather don't at all. Um, without any fear of consequences for violating them. RFK is, you know, he's a man from a powerful family who is, you know, who ha- of course has a very big name and has, has done a lot of things in his life. But uh, the things that they're saying to RFK, they're going to say to you times a thousand because the shred of respect that they have for RFK, they don't actually have for you because you're just a peon. And, um, and, and this, this hearing was revealing uh, of that particular theme. So there was plenty of the classic routine from Democrats on the panel. Uh, the idea being, well, that's not happening, but it's good that it is. So many Democrats are kind of they're beyond the the denial of cooperation between government and social media to censor certain viewpoints, because frankly, there's too much evidence of it to deny at this point. So uh, often they just argue that it's good now, or at least they did during this hearing. Here is a brief cut of Congresswoman Linda Sanchez of California and uh, Congressman Jerry uh, Connolly of Virginia saying your First Amendment right isn't absolute. And if they're censoring you to save lives, that is, of course, not just acceptable, but it's actually good that they're doing it. No right given to the people of the United States is absolute. And that includes the right to free speech. Protective measures were taken to take down disinformation about vaccines and about the nature of the virus and about protective measures we could take, including masks, including social distancing. We are not trying to censor speech. We are simply trying to create factually correct information to prevent harm to people. It was public health measures to protect lives. Again, something fisting. should be celebrated. Yeah, wow. It's like we didn't want to give you all the information in case you got the wrong information because we were trying to save lives. You could do anything under the guise of save lives, including kill people. Uh, Oh, yeah. You you can kill people to save people. Absolutely. Uh, Sanchez. Every genocide is about. (laughs) I know this sounds pedantic and specific and maybe like I'm not being good faith here, but I I do think it's important to recognize when they say these things, Sanchez says no right given to the American people is absolute implied in that statement is that they give us, give us rights. rights. They do not give us anything. They, in fact, they have a moral and legal obligation to respect the rights inherent to us by God and by nature. But that's their, their backward view. They are all our superiors and whatever we have is what they give us, not what is ours naturally. As far as no right being absolute, I mean, that's technically true. You still have to explain how this particular form of speech falls within uh, an area that is not protected by the First Amendment, a First Amendment exception, because it doesn't. Saying that masks don't work or saying that the vaccine is garbage, that is pure viewpoint, the heart of the First Amendment's protection. That is not incitement. That's not defamation. That's not obscenity. That is not any First Amendment exception. Uh, And the truth about the First Amendment is It is as close, it is very close to absolute as far as the case law is concerned. There is is a small selection of very narrow exceptions that she hasn't explained at all. Well, it's not absolute, so I can do whatever I want? No, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not censoring. We're not censoring. We're just providing factual information. Number one, you don't decide what factual information is. (laughs) Number two, the the complaint is not that they put out information, even though a lot of the information they put out was false. Um, the complaint is that you're taking down opinions that you, that you disagree with. Uh, so, so nobody's actually disputing the federal government publishing info. It's, it's just saying, could you not coordinate with big tech to delete ours? <laughs> and, uh, but they can't do that. And then the, you mentioned it, this idea that, that protecting lives, uh, should be, should be celebrated, but it's like, well, what is the limit on that, man? It, uh, mm. McDonald's ad got to delete that to protect lives. Uh, Members of Congress speaking in favor of sending guns to Ukraine. Delete that. Got to protect lives. Um, All of the Black Lives Matter lies that have fueled and perpetuated riots and destruction and indeed outright 
murder in some cases. Delete all that. We've got to protect lives. But it's just the arrogance and, and the disconnection of these people. They think that if only they could delete the right Internet posts, um, you know, they're heroes and they're saying they're saving lives. The reality is death is a natural consequence of life. Every day we all make choices that determine when, if, how we die. And you have to have or a certain... we don't make choices. I mean, yeah. people act... That is one of the problems with COVID, that the COVID has eliminated. It's this mentality that we're in control of our own fate, that uh, that death is not a natural consequence of life, that it's not an absolute inevitability for all of us and an immediate inevitability for old people. Like as a society, we're so distant from death. I think that that was kind of the heart of this problem. Yeah, well, yeah, the idea that if only we can make sure everyone makes the exact right chess move every single time that they can avoid death. I'm sorry, that's removing what it means to be a human and to navigate this totally. world on any sort of free terms. Yep. There that was not worth worse than death. So. Uh, yeah. Being Jerry Connolly's slave is certainly one. <laughs> yeah, um, there, that was that was not the most preposterous statement he uttered, though. Did you hear this one? Jerry Connolly says we need to get Dr. Fauci in here because this censorship only went one way against Dr. Fauci. Of course, it only works one way. The name of Dr. Fauci has been invoked. I'd love to have him here as a witness to describe his travail in being censored. But of course, with that right wing (laughs) censorship comes intimidation and threat and intimations of violence. Not enough. And a wink blink that by the way, violence can be justified. The violence, for example, here on January 6th. I guess it's- How did he even tie January 6th in that? Also, I love that there's a pink haired woman with a mask on. Right of course. Him, it's, just, it's, it's so outrageous. Um, the, the idea that, that he violence was censored could sometimes be justified. Have you read the Declaration? You remember the Revolutionary War? There are things that governments can do that erase their right to exist, like violating the rights of the people. And this. I know. I sorry. know. That's how nonviolent this country is that Fauci hasn't been killed by the populace yet. Do you it's think- just a testimony to our tolerance at this point. Yeah. Do you think Fauci legitimately fears for his life on a daily basis? If he did, no, he would not be and it's getting a problem. If he he would not be saying the things that he does if he feared for his life. And obviously, I don't know, people at Rumble, Susan, Raja Mohan, whoever is in charge these days. I'm not saying send threats to Dr. Fauci. What I'm saying, the principle here is that if you're going to openly discuss um, uh, uh, violating the rights of the people, in, the, in a way that Dr. Fauci has for years, you should fear some consequence for that. You are com- you are committing an immorality and there's a justified response to that. That's the basis for our entire country. Yeah. And if he were afraid, he'd be walking around with a security team like that's basically presidential level. He, and he's I, not. I think he actually does have a security detail. There was a report. What on does it look recently. like? It might be like Secret Service level. <laughs> it might be insane. Dr. Mm. Freaking Fauci. Anyway, um, yeah, but th- there there should be consequences for defying the rights and the free choice of the people. Dr. Fauci clearly not afraid of them. That's how he was censored, though, is because you posted like Dr. Fauci is a douchebag on Facebook. Ooh. That's how he was censored. Yeah. And then lastly, Jerry Connolly told RFK that he brings shame to his Kennedy name. You're not here to propound your case for censorship. You are here for cynical reasons to be used politically by that side of the aisle to embarrass the current president of the United States. And you're an enabler in that effort today. And it brings shame on a story name that I revere. (laughs) I began my political interest with your father. (laughs) Okay. It is a story name. (laughs) There are some stories. It's true. (laughs) But uh, the reason I bring this up is not just to dunk on the Kennedys. It's, It's this... It's a demonstration of how inverted and how twisted these people have become philosophically. This is party loyalty over family itself. This is backward, upside down. You owe more forgiveness, more latitude to your family than anybody else for several reasons. Number one, intact families keep people, uh, help people through tough times. They help get them out of them. Uh, Number two, intact families build stable societies. Oh, yeah. And number three, even for selfish reasons, if you don't buy that, if you're gracious with your family, you'll be gracious uh, or they'll be gracious with you when you need them someday. But this guy is saying, if you step outside of 
ideological boundaries. Just if you believe the wrong thing, not even if you commit a crime, just you have the wrong idea, you're out of the family. And making it even more preposterous, he's not even a member of the family himself. So he thinks that he is more entitled to the Kennedy name now because his views are so-called correct, but not RFK who has the actual Kennedy blood. Mm-hmm. So what's he if, if my views are correct, I'm entitled to your family. How many different iterations of that thinking have we seen appear yeah. in other contexts? This is just another example of it. Anyway, okay. Uh, anything else on RFK and the uh, the hearing that they had? Mm. Oh, we got some fun stories coming up. I got to give enough time to these because they're, well, this one's not, I guess it's a mystery of sorts. We don't know why he did it. Uh, but, you know, classic uh, mentally ill lone wolf. Uh, that's code for Muslim, as is what happened here. Uh Hey, don't we have a sounder for this? I, I forgot. I forgot to dig it out. But yeah, the nothing to do with the religion of peace. Terror Dude, attack Muslims religion. have been so chill lately that we forgot about the sounder that it, we have just for this. Uh, this kind of case. It used to be every week. It's like, oh, man, they like st- stabbed another priest's throat in Paris for it was like a weekly event back yeah. in you know the start of the show. They really took a break and got based. <laughs> they've, they've reverted back to their philosophical origins. They've started thinking <laughs> about some things. Uh, anyway, uh, it's, it's blondes warming to the Muslims continues. Yeah. But there bad. was a significant shooting in Fargo, North Dakota. You probably didn't hear about. No, um, since I now understand the reference, it was not Steve Buscemi and that other guy shooting a cop trying to kidnap Jerry Lundergaard's wife. That's not what happened. Um, the reason there's little news about this shooting is uh, number one, because a Muslim guy did it. Number two, he shot cops, not black people. So we're not really interested in that. Um, But there's another wrinkle in this story that could attract ATF and White House attention. So last Friday, this is July 14th, Muhammad Barakat, uh, a Syrian refugee who entered the U.S. in 2012 and became a citizen in 2019, opened fire on three police officers and a bystander for still unknown reasons. One officer was killed. Two other officers critically injured. That civilian was also seriously hurt. And it happened in the middle of the day, just before 3 p.m. on a busy street. Witnesses say the man just opened fire on the police with a rifle and uh, police shot him back and he was killed at the scene. The police officers at the time were responding to a car accident. Uh, Barakat shot from inside his car. He had multiple guns. He had uh, a homemade grenade, gas canisters, Propane tanks modified into improvised explosives and more than 1,800 rounds of ammo. Additional firearms, explosives, and ammo were later discovered at his home. On Friday, the uh, Attorney General of North Dakota said he believes this shooting was intended to be the start of a bigger ongoing attack. Uh, At the time, the downtown Fargo Street Fair and the Red River Valley Fair were underway uh, Bar- Barakat searched the internet for explosive ammo, kill fast and mass shooting events. In addition to information about the fair prior to the shooting, there's currently no motive established and officials say, uh, this guy, like all, uh, Muslim attackers, just a lone wolf attacker. As far as we know so far, there is apparently body cam footage of this particular event. Uh, it is not yet public because the investigation is ongoing. The footage could be released though. When the investigation is concluded, um, in his car at the time, of the shooting Barakat had four semi-auto handguns and three semi-auto rifles, including the one he used to commit the shooting. Now, notably the rifle that the shooter used had a fancy device called a binary trigger. And this is a trigger that will fire on pull and release. So these trigger kits are, are completely legal. In effect, if you, if you pull the trigger, you, you get a double shot. You pull One round, you release one round. That's how it works. But legally, that is still one shot per trigger function. That is the statutory definition under federal law of semi-automatic. So they're not legally fully automatic. Uh, Guns equipped with these triggers are not legally fully automatic. So they're not legally considered machine guns, which of course carry all sorts of stiffer regulation. Well, at a Friday press conference, North Dakota Attorney General Drew Wrigley, of course, blamed the trigger. He said um, he said that the the quote here is the attack was all made possible because of what is known as a binary trigger. He said everything you hit, you'll hit twice because you got the binary trigger, because, of course, 
we have um, we have never seen uh, shootings in this sort of this type of uh, of of count, this type of number. One dead, three injured with normal semi-auto weaponry before. Um, but now that we have the North Dakota Attorney General blaming the binary trigger, uh, and we've seen the uh, administration and the ATF uh, pull this move, and even with the prior administration uh, with the bump stocks, they've done it with bump stocks, they've done it with pistol braces, they've done it with so-called ghost guns. They'll just redefine statutory language for what is a gun, what counts as a certain type of gun, is this going to happen with binary triggers now? Because there's uh, no official comment from the White House just yet. But uh, I would not be surprised if uh, the next thing to be called a so-called machine gun is a binary trigger, even though they are not. And even though the ATF has said they're perfectly legal to own for the last eight years uh, since they entered the market. But that's what happened there. Uh, I got to leave enough time for Carly Russell, because I want to yeah. know what the hell happened here. We all want to know what the hell happened here. Um, okay. Okay, let's start at the beginning. Okay, so she left work. For, she worked at a spa um, on July 13th at 8.20 p.m. And then she calls 911, and she reports seeing a toddler wandering on the side of the interstate. We should start by listening to this 911 call. Here is her 911 call. I am on Interstate 459, and there is a kid just walking by their cell. And was the child on the left their or right side? On the right side. Not by now. How old they look? Um, like a toddler, like maybe like three or four. Did you pull over with them? Are you still with them? Yes. Okay, you're, are you with the child right now? No, I'm not. I didn't get out of the car. I'm just, I, I can see them though. Do you mind staying and keeping an eye on them until we get there? Yeah. Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay, okay. So then when police came, they found her car still running and her belongings, which includes, I, I could not stop laughing at this, a wig, an iPhone, Apple Watch purse, but no sign of her or this toddler. So an analysis of her phone found that she drove for 600 yards or six football fields while she was on the 911 call and she was supposedly observing this toddler. And then uh, 48 hours later, uh, 49 hours, she just turns up on foot at her parents' house and claimed that she had been kidnapped and barely survived. She had like a few bruises, her shirt was torn. It was all superficial. So detectives conducted an interview with her at the hospital and she claimed she was abducted by a man with orange hair and a bald spot, because it's always the white guy, who just came out of the trees and she claimed the man picked her up and forced her into a car. And the next thing she remembered, she was in the trailer of an 18 wheeler. Um, she told police that she heard a baby and a woman in the semi truck. She didn't see them. And then she says she escaped from the trailer before being recaptured and taken to a house where um, they took pictures of her bone or whatever. Uh, a question for the place. truckers out there. I don't know. But can you actually open a semi from the inside? Because there, there have been a lot of cases of migrants dying inside of these, inside of these yeah. rigs. Uh, maybe there's some kind of emergency latch or something. I have no idea. I just wonder I when know. she I says, no "I escaped the trailer." I assume if someone locked her in the trailer, they, uh, they didn't have a "Here is the get out easy" button on the inside of the door. Like she must have been locked in there, but she has no explanation for how she escaped. She just did. Uh, she said that once she escaped the trailer, though, that she was put in a car and that she was able to escape from a car. So she only right, had so to escape the, the trailer, trailer once. Captured by someone else. Same people. Oh, same people. OK, I thought it was someone. I thought it was two separate captors, but it's two separate kidnappings by the same person or people. By the same person. Right. OK. Um, but she just happened to be able to escape and flee uh, to where her parents lived, like right next to where her parents lived. So, right. OK. So then they're like, eh, this bitch is lying. So they looked into her phone and on the day of her abduction, she searched how to take money from a register without being caught. Also, one way bus tickets from Birmingham to Nashville. Um, and then she was doing a bunch of research about the movie Taken. <laughs> like well, I guess she did not have a particular set of skills uh, in executing. She this did plot. not. Yeah. 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 The police said there were also other searches on her phone that appear shed light on her mindset, bad respect to her privacy. 
we will not be releasing the content of those searches at the time. So I assume that she did take some money from the till additionally, but um, people at her work, they launched this huge search effort and they were in the media and everything like that. And then as information came out, they're like, oh, she did this to herself and they got super pissed and then they fired her. Like, this was some kind of spa or something. She also stole yeah. like a towel and some other items from the spa. She on stole her way some out. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and a, I assume some money. And apparently the spa is getting a bunch of hate online now because they're, yes. they said yeah, she's yeah. fired. Just, you know, obviously they don't want anything to do with her. Just not just because she's a liar, but because she duped the business into wasting a bunch of their time and resources trying to and find her. Yep. And they're, I guess getting a bunch of, it says the spa has been getting slammed with nasty social media messages and damning one star reviews because of its affiliation with Russell. But I don't understand. Is that people saying like, are, are they mad because they formerly employed her or are they mad because they fired her? Both. Why are you supposed to be mad for formerly employing her though? Why is like, why is that a problem? People get mad. People be mad. I don't get the anger. I don't get why it's there. For She's, She's going to get charged for the theft and then lying to authorities and filing a false police report. Um, but the question is the million dollar question. Why did she fake this? Um, I've seen Gone Girl three times. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, some of it was probably financial. Like maybe she thought she couldn't start her own GoFundMe, right? So maybe she thought there was going to be some financial benefit uh by virtue of just being in this situation later it must have been long term like my celebrity will bring me wealth down the road yeah maybe she thought she was going to get a book deal or, something like that um, a movie made about her or something like that uh there, there or is this no, was just female attention seeking and there's no racial component explicitly she said that the toddler was white she said that one of her captors was a white guy with orange hair but there was no allegation of like they beat me up and called me the N word and your typical hoax hate stuff that you usually hear. That was not a, a part of this either. Yeah. So it doesn't seem to have zero a, kidnappings a year are white men with red hair being committed about, you know, the victims of our large black women like this never, ever happens. I, uh, I remain open to the case if someone can provide one, but I can't think of one. It's really fell apart quickly. So it seems like it's quite obviously fake it's quite obviously a hoax she's refusing to speak with police any further i just have no idea what the motive what the intended outcome was what she was trying to achieve Maybe she, she also attention she also was googling um do you have to pay for an amber alert now am i mistaken in understanding that amber alerts are exclusively for children i did not think those are they are so did do she they expand them to adults or does she just not know that? Or did she have a plan to make a missing child a part of this? Obviously, a sort of a, a, a missing child was invented into the case in the form of this fictional toddler. Did she have know. some? It's so weird. It's like, I understand why you might want to disappear. You're like, I don't like my life. It sucks. I'm going to disappear. I'm going to go from Birmingham to Nashville or whatever she was planning. Guess what you can do? Just buy the ticket and get the hell out of there and don't tell anyone. You yeah. don't have to concoct this bizarre public story. Clearly getting police to the scene was the intent of the 911 call. How did that play into how she wanted this to play out? I don't know. I just, I, I'm fascinated by this case, but I can't, I can't come up with a coherent theory as to what she was trying to do. Uh, she wanted the attention. Simple as that, I guess. I shouldn't question that basic female reality. Mm. All right. Um, and, and another, uh, case of, I guess what you could call a hoax. It's not hoax hate. It's a hoax of sorts. I would say it's a grotesque misrepresentation. And I emphasize grotesque because what this one, a young woman in this case did is indeed grotesque. Did you read about this one? Yeah. Ooh. Um, it's really bad. Several prominent tweets and headlines this week claimed that a teenager in Nebraska was sentenced to 90 days in prison for using the abortion pill to uh, terminate her pregnancy. Uh, New York Times headline, for example. Uh, Nebraska teen who used pills to end pregnancy gets 90 days in jail with a picture of her very upset about it with next to like an ogre man who must be 10 feet tall or something like that. Anyway, um, if that sounds suspicious, well, that's because it's a complete distortion of what happened. As the community note on Twitter identified, uh, she was not in fact sentenced for 
the crime of having an abortion, though Nebraska made abortions after 12 weeks illegal in May. This event actually happened in April of 2022. So it's not the the new law in Nebraska is also getting litigated in the courts. So the new abortion law doesn't really apply here. And that's not what she was charged uh, and sentenced, uh, charged, convicted, uh, convicted or sentenced for in any case. Um, You scroll down and you, you read the first article in this New York times um, story it's interesting that the the headline and the first paragraph um, seem to have a disconnect. Quote, a Nebraska teenager who used abortion pills to terminate her pregnancy was sentenced on Thursday to 90 days in jail after she pleaded guilty earlier this year to concealing human remains. OK, well, th- that that wasn't part of the headline. What? Yeah. <laughs> Go on. I'd like some more information. The teenager, Celeste Burgess and her mother, Jessica Burgess, were charged last year for uh, after the police obtained their private Facebook messages, which showed them discussing plans to end the pregnancy and, quote, burn the evidence. This happened in April 2022, as I mentioned. She was 17 at the time. She was starting her third trimester of pregnancy at about 30 weeks. That is so crazy. I'm 14 weeks, and I felt the baby move. Yeah, Yeah, this is an all but fully developed uh, baby at this point. Now, as far as how this works, the, the mom ordered abortion pills online and those are only permitted for up to 10 weeks of pregnancy. The I mom, kind of can't believe that worked. What do you know what would happen with that physiologically? Does that just induce labor or what, what are we talking about here? Well, okay. So the abortion pill, it's a combination of two pills, mifeprestone and misoprostol, I believe. Now, they need to be taken in tandem for an abortion to be successful in 95% of cases, but you you can't take them a- after your first trimester. However, I was induced with emmeline with a drug called Cytotec. So one of the two drugs, and that causes you to go into spontaneous labor. Okay. So she probably, the, the baby was probably born alive. She legit. Okay. So she legit could have birthed a live baby and killed it after the fact. She That's was 30 a- weeks. It's a possibility. They're saying yeah, totally. their their claim is the baby was stillborn, but we don't know that as far as I'm aware. Well, it's not stillborn if you killed it while it was in utero. And I I, I bet the baby breathed. Yeah. Uh yeah. so um so mom orders these abortion pills. She takes these abortion pills. Um the mom also gave the pills to the daughter. Nebraska law requires a physician to oversee medical abortion, so that's its own legal problem. The case unraveled when police in Norfolk, Nebraska, began looking into concerns that a 17-year-old had given birth prematurely to a stillborn baby and that she and her mother had buried it. A detective subpoenaed medical records showing she had a due date of July 3rd. That detective then interviewed the teen who said she had given birth to a stillborn baby in a bathtub and then showed him where they buried it. The detective learned that uh, this teenager had actually, and, and her mom, had buried the remains and then dug them up and then drove to another town and then buried them again and then dug them up again and then buried them a third time. And if when they, the, she had just had a stillborn, they wouldn't have concealed the remains. Uh, yeah, that's uh, it, it, one would think unless they had a preposterous interpretation of state law or something. Um, but when the remains were actually recovered, they showed signs of thermal injuries as in burning. Now I'm unclear to what extent did they just burn something next to the child? Thermal injury is a weird, like if you burn a body, you're going to have more than thermal injury. You're going to have ashes effectively. So what, what exactly happened here? I I don't know, but it it would appear um, that they, that this was probably an, an I mean, quite possibly an induced live birth, a murder of that baby. And then God knows what to that baby followed by three separate burials. Chance of baby being born alive at 30 weeks. I mean, viability is 26 weeks, 22 weeks. Yeah. 98% Um, of babies born at 30 weeks gestation survive. All the signs of an intentional killing here. uh, It's not even being prosecuted as such, though. Murder is not a charge that's in play here. Um, So 90 days is actually incredibly light, given the sort of crime that uh, likely happened in this case. But Congressman Ted Lieu takes the award this week for absolute worst take with the double down. So Community Notes did its job on Twitter, noting, uh, hey, this uh, this particular teenager is not being sentenced for some sort of abortion crime. She um, she was sentenced for 
uh, burying, burying and concealing a dead body. That's an important distinction. Ted Liu responds, the Twitter community note at the bottom of the tweet is stupid. Putting women in jail for concealing an abortion as compared to having an abortion is not the winning message that Republicans think it is. Yes, because killing, burning and burying a nearly (laughs) fully developed baby is totally a winning message, Ted. But some things are not actually about the political own. You know, maybe like the dead baby in this case is a more of a worthwhile moral concern than, say, whether Republicans uh, will get a political win out of it or not. How about justice for that kid? Not a concern. Uh, Not a concern concern, at all. And of course, if I follow the logic here, he would be arguing for no oversight of abortions at all in any case. We wouldn't want to motivate women to conceal them after all. Well, what kind of preposterous argument is that? But we, yeah. d- we don't want to punish murder because that would just motivate murderers to conceal their killings. Well, <laughs> is that what you want? He seems to be asking. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I do want people to think twice about committing crimes uh, yeah. because the killing in this case, the killing is wrong and it deserves justice. Um, one tweeter responded. Uh, oh, I don't have the actual original tweet here. Thanks to Elon Musk's reforms over at X. I can't look at it. But one guy responded. Um, the quote was, um, she concealed a dead body, you sick fuck. <laughs> yeah. Ted Lou. And then Ted responded with even more astounding stupidity. You have the right. You have the right to believe a fetus is a baby. Yes. You, you do not have the right to force your religious belief down other people's throats, nor oh. force them into jail. That's why Democrats will flip the house next year because of people like you who want to jail women. So again, like, innocent baby straight up murdered body defiled horrible crime ted Lu's and chief it's concern. your religious imposition yeah. and ted Lu, ted Lu's chief concern i just hope democrats take back congress next that's the number one take we got to make sure that's the most important the most important consideration here but yeah the absurd reasoning invalidates any crime at all um on what basis do you believe any crime deserves prison then? Well, that's just your opinion and you have no right to impose your opinion on other people. You think robbery is wrong, but you have no right to impose that opinion on the robber by putting him in jail. It's not even shoving an opinion down people's throats though. It's the state of Nebraska through the due process, determining what is and is not a criminal violation within their state. That's not just some guy shoving his opinion down someone's throat. That is the people of that state coming together to make this legal determination. Ted Lieu is the one hundreds of miles away shoving his opinion down the throat of Nebraskans. And I guarantee you, if Ted Lieu had the legal opportunity, he would delete their political and legal will in a second. Yeah. And say, no, no harm, no foul. Burn all the babies you want. (laughs) What? (laughs) Just... (laughs) Sometimes it's like you have to be a parody account. You can't be serious. And then you, this guy's in Congress. He's real. Uh, supposedly, this guy is faker than Carly Russell's, uh, <laughs> Carly Russell's kidnapping story. That motherfucker is not real. Like the, yeah. the, the lizard seeing lady said, uh, this guy, uh, there's no way he's fake. All right, uh, man, uh, I'll have to be quick with the hoax. Hey, are you ready? Yeah. I'm okay. Ready. Let's talk about it. And now, the nobody saw it happen, but it's totally a product of Trump's America hoax hate crime of the week. Ah, shit, it's backwards. You think they'll notice? Well, both stories come from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. tonight. How many iterations of this story have we seen? Guy gets fired or kicked out or disowned. For making the OK hand sign, because, of course, that's secret code for white power. The D.C. United, which is some sort of professional soccer team, fired athletic trainer Reed Whitney this week after he displayed a discriminatory hand gesture in a staff photo taken at a Major League Soccer All-Star Game training session. The team says there is no place for racism, homophobia, misogyny or discrimination of any kind in our sport and world, which is weird. To say because that statement, in fact, contains a lot of discrimination, but just the good kind, I guess. Uh, The Washington Post story, of course, cites the ADL as the authority to say (laughs) that the OK hand sign means white supremacism. 
Uh, the photo that got him <laughs> fired is uh, is this one, and it really looks to me like he's playing the old circle game. You hold, you put the circle, you know, down below your waist, and if someone looks at it, you get to punch him in the arm. That's that's what this looks like to me. Poor guy. But maybe he's a secret Nazi. Great beard. What a waste of a beard. You know, this guy looks. Uh, he looks far too waste, cool though? for soccer. I, he has better things in his future. What a handsome fellow. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, this is very reminiscent of last week's story. We have another mm, gay yeah. man claiming to be homophobically assaulted on the street simply because anti-gay bigots couldn't handle how fabulously gay he was in public. Zachary Horvath says he made a last minute trip to Safeway at the end of June. Again, this is in DC and two store employees yelled hateful words at him and shoved him out of the store then when he was walking away, he says he was sucker punched from behind and he never saw the attacker, but he heard the attacker laughing about the fact that the, uh, the F slur is crying on the ground. I heard somebody walking away behind me laughing and laughing about the fact that the f- it was crying on the ground. That kind of broke my heart a little bit. Weeks after a surprise attack on the street, the shock and trauma still fresh for Zachary Horvath. Feels like I'm always having to look over my shoulder. The fact that I didn't see this coming when it happened scares it scares the crap out of me. He says it all started with the last minute trip to this Safeway in Mount Vernon Triangle late last month. He says it was before closing and he was trying to get chapstick when he was hit with hateful words by two employees and pushed out of the store. It turned into this whole heated exchange up to the front of the store as they were basically pushing me out verbally. They started throwing the word around. Moments later, as he was walking home on 5th Street Northwest, Horvath says the night took a violent turn. Before he knew it, he was on the ground, bloody and bruised. Somebody came up behind me and sucker punched me. Horvath says he wasn't able to see who hit him, but he did hear his attacker walk away. Physically assaulting somebody and then walking away and laughing about the fact that they're lying on the ground, hurting and bleeding. It's kind of like the lowest thing that somebody could do to somebody. <laughs> the assault happening in front of this bank, so he's hoping surveillance cameras caught it. In the weeks since, he hasn't heard much from police, but he hopes someone who knows something will speak up so he can get justice. I don't think I would be able to sleep at night if I didn't speak out on this because this should never happen to anybody again in the future. Mm-hmm. Mm. Fell while drunk or sexually propositioned to heterosexual black men. <laughs> uh, well, key facts. Uh, dude tried to get in a safe way at closing time and they apparently had to get forceful to get him out. So, so that's on camera. Well, that is his story. I haven't seen any footage to that effect, but he's saying I went there at closing time. My guess is he had some sort of dispute about wanting to buy chapstick, as he said, beyond the uh, chapstick, the posted hours. And um, it sounds like the store employees in charge of security were not uh, fond of that request. And maybe that request was a little insistent. So there's some sort of um, force exercise to get him out of the store. And and. Maybe his aggression at the store that pissed them off. Maybe that's substance fueled. Maybe that's uh, maybe he's under the influence of something. I'm guessing that he he might have stumbled around and bruised himself, given what sounds like absolutely jackassian behavior and embarrassment about facial bruising. And so he makes up a story as cover. Otherwise, this story makes no sense. Um, so he's saying the employees were hateful to him. But he didn't see who attacked him and can't identify them. Well, if you're saying the employees did it, then who are the employees? You have a description of them and they're on video. If you're saying someone else did it, then why are the employees relevant? And I, I'll tell you, I've, I've told this story before. I have actually been sucker punched in public. It was at Mount Hood in Oregon at Mistaken night. Mistaken identity. Yeah. yeah. Someone did it. because They thought I was someone that I wasn't. And I got a split lip from getting sucker punched. And do you know what I did as soon as I got hit, even though I was not expecting it at all and it was a complete shock and surprise? I went, what? I whipped around and I saw the guy who punched me and he actually yeah. ran away in sort of the way described here. And I actually, I, I was never able to figure out who this guy was, but I can still give you a general description of him. He thought you were Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, well, maybe I deserved it if, <laughs> if that's the case. 
But it's weird to get sucker punched and be in complete shock and lay down on the ground. Oh, man, that hurt so bad. Oh, ah, I can't see anything. Oh, that really hurt. I have no the pain is greater than my interest in learning who just punched me in the face. <laughs> That's not, not hurt that bad either. The, I got punched in the face hard enough to split my lip without any expectation of it. And even in that case, the 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 um, automatic need to know who did it was greater than the shock or the pain of getting hit in that way. Who did you sexually proposition? <laughs> That's between me and him. Uh, it was, um, it was everybody in the chat. Oh, okay. Uh, so it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense saying I got sucker punched and then I, but I didn't get knocked out and I was laying there just crying, but I didn't see who did it. That is a, that is a ludicrous nonsensical yeah. story. But even as told again, this happened initially at a store entry where there are cameras, then outside of a bank where there are cameras. And this is in a city, a leftist city that prioritize that prioritizes anti-gay hate crime investigations, just like the rainbow flag ass wiping hobo in New York. I yeah. guarantee there were probably half the city's detectives assigned to this case while the rest of the city is getting shot in uh, all sorts of crime of color that doesn't count. If they can't figure this out in Washington, D.C., it did not happen. Dude made up the story to cover for his own drunken jackassery. Guaranteed. Yeah. But. Anyway. Although if this did happen, I kind of don't care. That guy seems like he really deserves getting punched in the face for one thing or another. <laughs> the fa that face was punchable. What can I say? It's. Uh, yeah. It <laughs> I just wouldn't be able to sleep. Maybe somebody kicked his ass just because he came in for something stupid at closing time. That is an ass kicking worthy offense. Could be as simple as that. No, who comes in at 11 for chapstick? Get the fuck out of here. Punch. He was busy blowing different dudes all night. He for chap. <laughs> it was an emergency. <sighs> okay. Uh, time for the movie review. Let's get to it. In a world of movie references flying over his head, one man will finally watch them. This is the Matt and Blonde Show movie review. Tonight's movie is the 1988 Tim Burton comedy horror classic Beetlejuice, in which young newlyweds die in a car crash, and to scare the new family who moves into their home away, they solicit the haunting help of a freelance degenerate undead bio-exorcist. And even more bizarrely, Alec Baldwin is unrecognizably thin. From uh, yes. movie pickers Jamie and Jeannie, uh, Tim Burton's distinctive visual style and a blend of comedy and supernatural elements make for a fun and eccentric viewing experience. This is one of those films that has grown on us with each successive viewing. They, of course, offer their AI art for the week once more. Oh, stupid <laughs> me. I didn't make this. Uh, I can't blow this up any more than that because I didn't I didn't uh, set it up right when I made the uh, review here. But you still get the idea. Um I just resent being Alec Baldwin in this severed head <laughs> depiction. But uh, if you'd like to see the artwork, of course, you can check out the review. And I'll make it so it's expandable as soon as we're done with the stream. Um, but yeah, as always, your review and your rating. Yeah, I'm actually not a big Tim Burton fan. But I've always, I've always loved this movie. It might just be nostalgia, but I did rewatch it and it, I felt like it held up. Um, it's it's really inventive and it transports you to another world. You cannot worry about the rules of this. I know you're going to get, I know. Oh, I love rules. On this. No, I know that you're going to talk about um, the, the inconsistency of the rules of ghosts and the afterlife. Nah, not really actually, but I, I could, yeah, I know annoying. you're going to say something about Beetlejuice being a pedophile. Uh, kind of, but not, I, okay. I did, I did kind of sort of accuse him of that in one line in the, in the review, but that's okay. not a main. Point. Those are my two predictions for your. Yeah, I think you hated this movie. I was watching it and I was thinking, I bet Matt hated this. Um, but I thought it was it was it was such a fun. It was mad fun to watch. The claymation's quirky and memorable, and Michael Keaton's performance was so funny. That that scene, <laughs> I always think about this, where he's like, "Well, Alec Baldwin's like, what are your qualifications?" He's like, "Well, I, uh, I went to Harvard Business School and Juilliard, and I lived through the Black Plague." <laughs> and I've watched the exorcism 126 times and it keeps getting funnier every time. <laughs> every time I see that, it's like, it's just the way he does it. He's, it's just, just a funny, it's just a funny movie. I, I, I know that you hated this. You don't have to tell me. 
Um, Alec Baldwin, so young and handsome. My friends that were watching it with me, they're like, that's not Alec Baldwin. I'm like, yes, it is. If I <laughs> didn't know, I don't think I would have recognized him. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was just so, so fine. Gina Davis was great. I don't think this movie has a super deep message, but um, it was fun for fun's sake. And it took me out of my day and gave me a break. And I had a great time watching it. Um, four out of five. Four out of five. I know you hated it. I know you hate um, it. I know you you're know. correct. The only question is, was it a one or was it a two? I think you one star this. I, when I was no. watching it, I was just like, I just think that he hated this so much. I did. It's not on you gave the, it a two? It's not on the highest rankings of my hatred or the lowest rankings of my enjoyment, depending on how you okay. conceptualize it. But um, okay. all right. Some things I can credit it for. Like there is some aspect. I, I love 80s cheese. All right. The kind of 80s exaggerations, the, the effects that there's the effects that are so bad that they're good. This has some of that. Some of the effects are so bad that they're just bad. Uh, the <laughs> sandworm. I mean, it looks like a sock puppet. puppet the sandworm does. Yeah. Um, Adam's severed head looks like it is straight off the uh, the spirit Halloween clearance rack. And then um, and I, I, I hated Beetlejuice is going to show his scariest stuff. Well, can you be scary? Sure. How about this? They bitch out and show it from behind. So I don't even get to see Beetlejuice. It was the 80s, man. <sighs> OK. But I will credit. So, so the Maitland's uh, scary faces where they like elong, they make these weird like plague doctor beak faces and do all these weird things. That's the kind of stuff that's like, OK, I mean, this is it looks horrendous, but it's still kind of quirky and funny. Fair enough. Beetlejuice's snake attack. They got some pretty OK movement out of the face and and, and some of that on the tongue. I, everybody in the, the otherworldly waiting room, there's like the cut in half lady. The shrunken head guy, the the choked on a bone guy. There were some cool concepts there and some good makeups. The movie did win an Oscar for best makeup. So I'll give some uh, some credit there. Some there was some ad- additional creativity in some of those effects, too. Um, the one of the things my my wife really appreciated that I appreciate, too. I think it's funny. Um the uh, Juno, the caseworker lady smoking a cigarette all the time, <laughs> the smoke coming out of her slit of her throat. Yeah, yeah. That was great. Um, and then I thought um, Al- Adam, Alec Baldwin's character kind of bending his nose back into place when he realizes he didn't fix it. There's some stuff like that. That was uh, pretty creative and pretty funny as far as the effects go. As far as what I didn't like, I'm not going to get extremely technical about the rules that are just nonsensical and inconsistent as you, as you um, mentioned, but I think there's plenty of that. There's actually not that much Beetlejuice in this movie. He's not even a protagonist really. This this is a movie about the relationship between the two families and Beetlejuice is just kind of a guy who shows up halfway through the movie. He's a part of that interaction, but he's not the focal point. I guess, you know, you Beetlejuice, I guess, is is sort of the quirkiest character or something. But fundamentally, it's a story about interaction between two families. Beetlejuice just has a supporting role in that. The plot kind of reverses itself and really goes nowhere. So it's not just that Beetlejuice is a secondary character. In ways, he's arguably irrelevant because his entire inclusion is on the premise that he can scare away the Dietz family. But then he doesn't and he gets taken out and the families find peace despite him, not because of him. And so the movie's plot line becomes, hey, we need this guy to help us. Oh, wait, no, we don't. The end. And it's just a pointless story about a pointless guy. Um, oh. I'm not demanding that this. I didn't go in with the expectation that this movie is going to be like some profound philosophical exercise, even though I appreciate those things. I just at points there were like hints of interesting philosophical themes that just get dumped on by Beetlejuice, like making some jerk off motion or something like that. Yeah. There were these interesting themes about the relationship between the living and the dead and whether we actually should seek to cross that threshold from one realm to the other. And if there is actually any relief in death or if we seek death before it's time, do we actually end up with more suffering in whatever that other side world is? And every time they kind of got to an interesting point or thought about that, it's just like, here's some ridiculous effect or here's some like stupid Beetlejuice line about nothing. I know that that philosophy is not the design of this movie, but it doesn't mean that I enjoy the design of this movie for that reason either. 
And lastly, um, I don't even know who the hell I'm supposed to like because everybody is completely hateable. Adam, yeah. Alec Baldwin's guy, he just lets Beetlejuice physically harass his wife without intervention. Uh, he tries, but he's a beta male. You know? <laughs> Beetlejuice, likewise, has no respect for the marriage, but that is uh, maybe not as great of a fault as um, his affinity for a minor in his own prospective marriage. But the thing about Beetlejuice, he sucks at his job, too. He promised he would scare them away, and then he just couldn't. Lydia... Lydia's a liar. Now, young or not, she did make a promise to Beetlejuice that she betrayed. And then she sent oh him. Oh, my God. Are you serious? She sucks, too. How can you like Lydia? Uh, Charles, Lydia's dad, he's not even going to let Lydia mourn for her dead mom. And Delia's uh, Delia, who's who's uh, Kevin's mom from Home Alone. I'm just waiting for her to scream <laughs> Kevin the whole time. Um, you know, that which, actor that plays the dad is a pedophile. Arrested. Yeah, he's also um, he's he's the dude from Ferris. He's the principal from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He's the newspaper guy in Deadwood. Wasn't and, he um, in um, Home Alone? I don't think he's in Home Alone unless I'm oh. incorrect. But um, Lydia's Amadeus. stepmom. Oh, yeah, he might be in that. Uh, no concern for Lydia either. The only character who is remotely likable is Barbara. She has all the traits of a good wife and mother. But of course, she's dead. And married to a man who would watch her get plowed by Beetlejuice anyway. So at best, she is tragically wasted potential. That's all she is. Um, so it, it's weird. It's like Beetlejuice. I get he's supposed to be a douchebag. But who's who's the non douchebag I'm supposed to root for in this story? I can't identify that person. So everybody sucks. It's like I want you all to get sandwormed so I can stop watching this. But at least it was mercifully short under 90 minutes, excluding credits. Um, still it, uh, it's, I, I don't have passionate hatred for it, but it is uh, a two wiki production for me. It's definitely enough for me, dog. Don't look at me like you're surprised. You knew exactly what I was going to know, but I thought you could like get into the fun, you know, I thought, uh, I thought I kind of expected you to hate it, to be honest. Um, uh, more classic. of a, more of a critical split among the early vote in the audience. Um, a third of the audience giving it a four wiki rating, a quarter of the audience giving it a three. You got a fifth of the audience with a five right behind it. And then there's still, you know, almost 20% of the audience giving it a two or a one. Beetlejuice is, uh, is controversial, not uh, an overwhelming opinion about it. All right. As we mentioned, your special list of documentary nominations for the fifth, sun- uh, fifth Sunday in July rejected because that's apparently all the voters do with whatever blondes list is they just reject it so i took a random selection from imdb's top 50 documentary list and it is free solo the story of uh, alex hunold climbing el capitan in yosemite which i have seen but uh have you, uh, you i take it you thought you have seen this you mentioned earlier right yeah yeah and every time i've seen it i've just wanted to be watching touching the void which is a uh. way better film uh, Touching the Void has some horrific injury. Uh, spoiler alert, Free Solo does not. Yeah, it's uh. a shame. So we will watch uh, We will watch Free Solo. After that, we have a fresh, uh, fresh list of nominations for August from listener J.G. Henry. Uh, that list of options includes All the President's Men, Contact, The American President, Silverado, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Roxanne, Kung Fu Panda, passengers the 2016 movie or of course you can reject the list in favor of a randomly selected top rated movie instead as a reminder if you'd like to read my uh, movie reviews comment how wrong i am submit your own rating vote for the next movie and sign up for the chance to be the movie nominator for the month the one and only place to do it is in my weekly movie review column linked in the description and on the home page of the website that is matt and and that'll do it. Man, jam-packed show tonight. Whew. No, I know. Um, we got to catch up with our chatters. I could, uh, let me hop over to Rumble for a minute. And we'll come back to YouTube and Tippy. Hillbilly Deluxe says, uh, I'm not saying threats to Dr. Fauci. Why give a warning? Just to, uh, dispatch the assassins. <laughs> Joking, Raja Muhan. By the way, I don't watch movies or documentaries for The Message. I just watch to be entertained. Yeah, um, well, 
one of the things we didn't talk about tonight that I wanted to, but just, you know, there's more important things to discuss. Kamala Harris's speech being all mad about slavery uh, lessons in Florida schools, but she did her classic line. Are there any math teachers here? I love Venn diagrams. And I'm thinking, is that really a math concept? Math? <laughs> yeah. I don't think Venn diagrams are mathematic, but okay. Anyway, the reason I'm getting to that is the message and the entertainment. If they're a Venn diagram, to me, they're pretty closely overlapped. That is my enjoyment is going to rely on a lot of the philosophy behind the movie and the, sort of the philosophy that the movie explains or portrays or explores. Um, I get it. Sometimes you see a movie. It's like, no, that's not a thinker. It's just fun to watch. And for many people, I gather that could be Beetlejuice. But if I had seen it when I was really young, maybe like maybe the nostalgia holds up for me. Having never seen it until, you know, I'm 35. It's just like, who boy, this looks like uh, a lot of this looks like someone did it for their uh, senior project at some sort of uh, in some sort of film class or something like that. Not all of it, but some of it is atrocious. Uh, laser 47 says my rumble chat from a few weeks ago that lost in the mail. Here's try number two, some names, um, of a certain heritage to consider Ingrid and Astrid for the girls, Eric with a K Bjorn Ragnar for the boys. Uh, yes, I have I love gone through the name Ingrid. I've gone through all the Nordic options. Um, Eric Ingrid with is a, not a pretty sounding name when you say it. Too. Yeah. I, I'm not a, I'm not an Astrid guy either. That sounds like Astrid. <laughs> That's too that. close. Uh, Eric runs in my family. My brother's middle name was Eric with a K. The, uh, oh, really? The, the Nordic spelling. Yeah. Ragnar is like straight Viking, man. You have to be yeah. a Viking warrior or nothing. So Ragnar is probably Ragnar. out. But uh, I like the uh, I like the options. And sorry about the missed chat. Rumble has been acting a little weird lately. D the system to read them is thrown together by some third party. If I miss any Rumble chats, Send me an email. I'm happy to refund them for you if uh, you would like that. Hillbilly Deluxe says, regarding the Nebraska girl, it sounds like Moloch got his due. Uh, literally, thermal injury grotesque is more like it. Yeah, I mean, uh, the idea that 90 days is uh, an, an unjustly harsh punishment. I know, they I, literally sacrificed a baby to Moloch and like, do 90 days Republicans and they're anti blood da, da, da. I'm like, are you people fucking serious? She murdered a kid. The Don't only mitigating factor is that she was 17 at the time. But as I gather, she was very close to 18. That's yeah. it. So she can go to any, she could have gone to any state and had a, a medical abortion at a doctor's office at, at eight weeks. Uh, yeah, there was also not text that message. I would agree with that morally, but like this cannot be the best. If she was going to have an abortion, this is probably the worst possible way she could have handled it. Um, yeah, I mean, at that point, it's like you're way. Yeah, there's there. Not saying you're saying there is a good way, uh, but at that point, like there. <laughs> whatever she would have so uh, quote unquote chosen at that stage would be grotesque and and morally hideous. No. You know. All abortion is bad, but I think everybody can agree that late term abortion is more grotesque and horrible yeah. than early term well, abortion. It's it's so funny. It's like uh, this is, statistically, this sort of thing is an extreme outlier. I mean, they, when they argue that point, that is correct. But now we get this extreme outlier. And even then, these people can't say, OK, that's fucked up. I'm not in favor of that. No, no. It has to be defended as though it, this is so it's understandable. This ruined her life in a way that having a baby would not have. I, I don't uh, understand yeah. why. <sighs> Shadow Band 420. I got to see Tyler Fisher last night. Guy is hilarious and doing good work against the woke. We need to support more anti-woke entertainers and musicians. The recent Al Dean stuff comes to mind. I don't know Tyler Fisher. Actually, the name sounds familiar, but I don't know him. Okay, I recognize the face now. Yeah, I, a comedian guy. Um, good. I'm glad it was uh, an enjoyable event. And thanks for uh, letting us know and for supporting the show. Hottie Twerkman says all ages garden party 10 to 2 Saturday, August 5th at the original Montana governor's mansion in Helena string quartet 10 to noon Greenbrier might be one to watch. Uh, well, I did not know that event was going on. That um, sounds so fun. What is this? It's some sort of uh, event at the, uh, the original Montana governor's mansion in Helena. I've never been there. That's um, oh, it's about an hour and a half away from me. But uh, so it's what, like a five and a half hour drive for me for you. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. 
maybe a little more. Oh my gosh, that sounds so fun. We should go. Uh, August 5th? Well. It's a Saturday. Um, yeah, I have some other, th- well, I may have complications, but I'm open. I'm open to the idea if you're serious. 20 people. That's it. Like, the oh, wait, no, no those, those are the tours. Never mind. Ah. Um, all right. Uh, thank you for the tip, Hadi Torkman. And if you, if that's an event that you're going to, I hope you have a good time and maybe outside chance, uh, I guess maybe we'll, we'll be there. I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, Sounds fun. All right, um, we're good on Rumble. Thank you guys over there. Uh, let's go over to YouTube and Tippy. I do have one on Odyssey, but I will come back to that. Oil King, I think that he's a non-English speaker that has schizophrenia. Is my guess. Dude, that's your theory. All right. Yeah. Time to grease some gears and bring info to Matt and to the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tooted my favorite pole dancer. Mumble rap is bad. It's lazy bum singing. Some of those things are true well it's not my concern i don't even i don't even know it's not my concern because i don't understand it thank you for the thank you oil king appreciate it so we're too good. watch the Knowles interview with q non shaman and the one thing i learned is that i clearly don't do enough drugs i didn't see that did you i have not i didn't know that he got him of course i would love to talk to q non shaman oh, yeah. and if he's doing media rounds uh we're gonna have to investigate that because that would be a, a great conversation um, I assume that that the shaman bit was not just a January 6th show, that there's something spiritually legitimate about that for him. That, and that must be Why would what, you uh, assume that. Well, I Tortuga is saying, you know, I don't do enough drugs. It would imply to me that uh, QAnon shaman has some out there concepts. He was. Explaining. Why would you assume they're spiritual? He might just be like, oh, I'll, I'll drug that. Sorry. Well, I was I was trying to be. I was trying to give as much credit as I could. You're right. It might be just uh, substance enhanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Zach Log the Great. I still think about the James Field case sometimes, and it just seems so unjust. He tried to warn them. I mean, the car had Dodge written right on it. <laughs> For more deep thoughts, find Zach Log on YouTube or Odyssey. I actually think about James Field really frequently. It really bums me out still. Does he accept mail? <laughs> Have you tried? You can't write to Ted anymore. Yeah. Have you tried James Fields? I don't know. Maybe I should. Um, Son of the Wolf. Matt and I once made love. He gave me the extra menthol and I spewed my oats and almond all over everything. Also, I turned 36 tomorrow. Never thought I'd make it this long. Congratulations. Uh, happy birthday. Uh, inappropriate. Uh, inappropriate story aside. Uh, but thank you. And, and uh, all the best on your birthday. Boogeyman 917 says, I doubt it. Thank, thank you, you. Boogeyman. John Davenport from Utah. Blonde, how close are you to 300 pounds? You're looking juicy and chubby. Okay. To be fair, I'm pregnant. Okay. I'm 14 weeks pregnant. Um, and I weigh 148 pounds. I'm five foot six. So it's not terrible, but like I'm chonk. It's, it's not great either. Uh, uh, I'm told it happens during pregnancy. Yeah. The norm is like 30 your, pounds gained. Is it not something like that? Yeah. But you're not supposed to gain any weight during your first trimester how re- how common is that though uncommon yeah um and i gained like six plus pounds that's still pretty minimal i would think so i can only gain 19 more pounds during the rest of the pregnancy that's it. <laughs> that's well it. burn them all you know head on down to uh whatever your favorite fast food is and uh chow down i did eat taco bell today too to be fair they've got a really good bean and cheese burrito i just really wanted it uh the uh, <laughs> I was told that their whatever their like new fried chicken taco thing is was legit. So I, I, I that's the last Taco Bell I had. I was never eat Taco Bell, but I had Taco Bell like a week or maybe two ago. Um, it was fine, but uh, Taco Bell just it's not it's not for me. I don't hate it, but if I'm gonna get fast food, I'm gonna use that opportunity for something else. Oh, I'm gonna get a McDonald's filet of fish sandwich. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan Prezios. I guess today's hoax hate is Carly Russell. Yeah. I mean, kind of. It was just, a hoax and I hate her. So, yeah. Well, that I guess I was going to say there's no hate component, but there you go. You filled it. Um, Laurel. It's amazing that Blanc can participate in the chat and follow her conversation with Matt. I cannot pay attention to two things at the same time. I don't know how you do that. Um, no one, you know, multitasking is not real. People, Nobody can actually do it. There are just people that are more adept at getting back on task. Hmm. when they switch tasks nobody can actually pay attention to two things at once it's impossible 
Well, Blonde has perfected something as close to it as possible. And uh, thank you, Laurel. Appreciate it. I hope you are uh, doing well. (gasps) And uh, as always, if people would like uh, some earlier Sunday entertainment, Laurel is a great channel to stop by and check out and say hi. Um, AP from Wednesday. For me, it's all the Brandons and Kyles. Just because every Kyle arrive, alive <laughs> drives a WRX vapes and wears a monster hat slightly to the side doesn't mean they're all yeah, D-bags. Well, you know, that's just like uh, your, opinion, man. your opinion, man. I've had bad Brandon and Kyle experiences. <laughs> this was in the context yeah. of Wednesday. People asking if there are any names with with which you have bad associations. For me, it's Brandon's and Kyle's and yeah. it's not because of the cars they drive. I actually, uh, for better or worse, I, I share that trait with them and I like those cars. Uh, the vaping though. I like to joke that, um, if I ever do sell my car, I'm going to advertise it. A lot of people have made this joke. It's not mine, but if I ever make a Craigslist, um, extremely rare, uh, you know, used good condition, 2015 super WRX never vaped in. So I'm going to demand yeah, like really. top dollar because not as $75,000. That actually would be a lie. There was a friend of mine who vaped in it once and I had to ask him to stop. He didn't even ask me. He just started vaping. You mother. Like, Dude, I, don't, I know those aren't cigarettes, but get that shit out of here. <laughs> That's true. Robin D. Banks. Oh, okay. Matt and I once made love. Not really. Takes a slow drag off the cigarette. Staring sadly into the distance. When you spend so much time chasing Matt Peen, you never stop to chase your own dreams. <laughs> okay. I, think I did a pretty good job. That that is uh that is a that's a twist, Robin. Thank you for that. Killer Mongero says, Matt and I have never made love, but if we do, you better wear that twins hat. Oh, I will. Yeah, you have you have my promise. I uh I, I believe you. I absolutely will. I have word from his wife that he never takes it off. He doesn't take it mm. off to shower. He doesn't take it off for any. She has the experience that Killer Manjaro oh. is looking for. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. Nuggle like buck. I'd be willing to attend a women's soccer game for free if they played audio from women's tennis over the loudspeakers. <laughs> <laughs> Just the grunting? Is that what you're getting at? Nonstop Serena grunts? Oh. Yeah. Ugh. Hmm. Robin D. Banks. Um, Matt and I once made love, not really take slow. Dry. I just I just read this one, Robin. We'll send you that money back. She got duped by uh, Raja Muhan on that one. You got double teamed <laughs> by Matt. He's been tricky lately. Hat. So if that was uh, if that was accidental, Robin, and you'd like a refund, um, send me an email. We'll take care of that. We should not accept a call to violence exceptions to the First Amendment. Bill of Rights was written by men who would use speech to call for violence against tyrannical government. They cast off. Of course, I can't believe that that didn't occur to us either. Well, there is sometimes that. you verbally have to call to violence. How else are you going to do it? You're just going to go up to somebody and stab them. There is that component. Um, of course, there are there is a such thing as a morally justified call to violence. I, I think that's true. I think it is also true that I, I don't think I don't think it's outside the scope of of uh, or I don't think it's necessarily inside the the intent of the first amendment to say that that states should have no authority to penalize things like threats among citizens. If you say or you you're organizing with somebody, "Hey, I'm let's make a plot to go kill this guy." that there's that that would receive first amendment protection that you have a constitutional right to incite crime or organize crime in that way. I don't think that's necessarily true, but I grant your point that Um, The fundamental point that this idea that there's no such thing as justified violence ever. I mean, that's plainly untrue in our interaction with each other as individuals. Uh, Insofar as if you attack me, there is a justified violent response to that. Same applies to government. The government doesn't exist on some separate superior moral plane where they can do things that we can't. They exist on the same one. In fact, if anything, it's the reverse because they exist, morally speaking, at our consent not the other way around. Um, so I grant your point, like the, the idea of the government saying, well, no violence is ever acceptable. And that that's, that's pure nonsense. Yeah. That's, that's absurd. Um, Kaiser and Gilroy blonde and I once half relations while she was with child. Her new babe shall require traversing by motorized carriage in order to have slumber. I just blonde. I shan't disgrace my bride of 16 years, not 16 year old bride, bride of 16. Ah, thank you for clarifying. That's gross. Do you so? No, no, no. He he means that I was with my child, not with child, which makes this less disgusting. Well, now I'm not sure I follow. 
Mm. Oh, Hath. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is definitely, this is, this is getting weird here. I'm just gonna, I'm going to refrain from comment. Long on John left his boycott result. Tried in a small town hits number one on the charts. Right wing boycott result. Bud light loses $30 billion. Times might be a changing. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. It's nice to see some cultural wins. I, um, I haven't commented much on the try this in a small town thing. Uh, and I, I, I get the gist. It's like he wrote a song and there was a music video and it had footage of the Black Lives Matter riots and people said that was racist, but he says it's not racist and now people love the song. Uh, I've also seen some evidence that what's his face, Jason Aldean, has had some you know, pro gun control takes and some other things that I'm not necessarily fond of. So this one, I don't know. I'm just I'm just kind of sitting it out. But if the end result is that people are more aware that there was a lot of uh, messed up bad stuff done in 2020, uh, that's fine. I am in favor yeah. of that uh, net win. Um, losing my nerve. Nick Fuentes and AF. Who is AF? Uh, America first. Oh, right. As a whole is rife with pedophiles. Look up Ali, Ali, Alexander, Nick New. They all talk about impregnating 16 year old. That is not pedophilia. 16 is the age of consent in 34 states. It's by definition not pedophilia. Pedophilia is wanting or actually having sex with a prepubescent child. Why do people do this? It, it, it makes you lose credibility when you're actually talking about pedophiles. Uh, I don't know the specifics of the accusation, so I will have to punt. But it's not against the law, ho. Oh, fuck you. LaDonna agrees with you for what it's worth. Besides, half the people in America first are 20. If you're 20 and you want to have sex with a 16-year-old, you're not a fucking pedophile. Uh, for, I, I, if that's what's going on here, for whatever moral dispute we may have with this, it is certainly not the same thing as uh, you know the old uh, Jared Fogle or something like that. Was he into very young chicks or boys it was uh was it he was distributing uh, photos was he not i better go back before i've defamed I jared fogel let me let me let me get the record straight here on the subway man while you carry on Real uh, thing. okay uh, let me find the specifics a movie star is born uh, his movie trailer is out now joggers gonna jog written and directed by boots riley is the worst satire director that will gaslight you to like it because racism, yeah, 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 I tooted. Now that was a lot mo- more, co- I still don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but that was a lot more coherent than your previous one. You also said, speaking of Coke, two men arrested in an act have charges mentioned in Brisbane court, over 61 million yacht cocaine seizures in Townsville. Yeah, 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 I tooted. Three to four hour Sunday show, yeah. $61 million in cocaine? A lot of cocaine. Uh, Thank you, Oil King. And uh, my sources say the child pornography with which Jared Fogle was involved included children as young as six. So, ooh, just clarifying the record. Not that that changes anything. Uh, I don't story. know. It just says. I think he was a homosexual pedophile. Uh, some were the, the the investigation initiated when he made comments about middle school age girls. But I don't know that the con- the content for which he was busted was exclusively girls or not. I don't know. Wait, is this Ali Alexander character a homosexual man? Don't know. I guess that would change things. Maybe I don't know. In comment hands, Matt, quick, who will be present in twenty twenty four? Blonde immediately go wide eyed like the smug black chick on Mar when Coulter said Trump. If Matt is right, this clip will live forever. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Everyone knows who it's going to be. Come on, man. It's going to be Joe Biden. Everybody. Wait, knows what did she do? Uh, I don't I remember the moment. Hmm. Oh, oh, way back when. This is way back when. I Okay, yeah, you're talking about the moment. This must have been like 2015. Yeah. Like when Trump first announced and Ann Coulter correctly predicted Trump would be president. And was it Joy Reid? Someone like that reacted with like a stunned face. Dude. Um, and then I the have, entire audience laughs at her and she's just sitting there like. I have to make... <sighs> uh, Joe Biden, the favorite. After all, he received 81 million votes. I mean, it's going to be impossible to beat. Michael Lunky Buck, showing picture of my son's actions is a violation of all sense of decency. She should be ashamed of her actions, kind of like getting punished for showing crime scene photos in a murder trial. <gasps> yeah. Mm. Um, and Knuckle Lunky Buck, Blonde, you should name your daughter Robin. Matt, you should name your son Knuckle. <laughs> Knuckle Christensen. <laughs> I actually do like the name Robin. It's on my list. 
Uh, knuckle, knuckle is not happening, but thank you for the suggestion. It is appreciated. He also said, when we make babies, we'll name our firstborn after you guys. Matthew uh, and Rebecca are both unassailable names. Um, well, for, I don't dislike my name. Um, that was just growing up. There were too many Matthews, man. I was yeah. always Matt C my entire life. Yeah. Uh, Matt, Matty C. Yeah. That was a problem. Son of the wolf. Ren makes me think of Ren and Stimpy. Oh. Yeah, but that's R E N, isn't it? Or is it W R E N? I can't remember. It's R E N. Yeah. Issue. When watch Sound of Freedom today, it's a worthy movie to support and hope it can shed light on human trafficking and slavery that's going on these days. Can we channel reparation money into ending current slavery happening today? I know that maybe this is a good thing, but it's like they never would have released this if it were about white kids. Like it had to be brown kids. Then everybody can talk about pedophilia. Then it's fine. I don't know. I, I guess it takes place, what, in Mexico? I don't know the exact context. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Prezios. Oppenheimer wasn't propaganda. One can say there are many similarities to today. What they did to Oppenheimer politically is similar to what they're doing to Trump hmm. today. I find it hard that, to believe that Christopher Nolan like didn't fuck this up. But maybe. I like The Dark Knight, so maybe. That's a great Although movie. I hated I liked, Interstellar. I liked Interstellar. Yeah. I'm trying to think of uh, other movies that he's made that maybe we've watched. I'm sure we've watched several. I'll look while you read to remind myself if I generally like or generally hate. Um, Nagalanki Buck. Give me liberty or give me death, constitutional framer. No constitutional right is absolute. Constitutional traitor. Uh, yeah. Well, and, you know, the framers had uh, some intended consequences for that sort of thing, and we uh, have failed to live up to their enforcement. And so here we are um, being propagandized to believe that uh, that that enforcement would be um, that we would be the bad guys in such a situation. Uh, he also did the prestige, which I was kind of that movie. Sucked it, it was too. just OK. I, I, I was not a huge fan. Um, after this one, I got to reload. Uh, okay. Meet you. We must save lives. Any congressman pushing the mass cultist viewpoint should be tarred and feathered to protect us from these dangerous viewpoints. Tar and feathering was was respectful. All right. It was just about a little bit of public embarrassment. The old and a reminder. TNF. Yeah. All right. The little known fact that I didn't know. Maybe other people knew this, but I didn't until I started reading about them out of um, purely academic interest in the context. It fits into the context that we find ourselves these days. There were no fatal tarring and featherings in the colonial era. The revolutionary era. That is era. just shocking. Didn't That's happen. Shocking. There, there are burns. There are injuries. I'm not concealing that. But this, um, I think, what what show was it? Was it John Adams? There was a tarring and feathering in that show. And it was maybe? like horrific and that guy died. Yeah. there. I think there's been some um, some unfair portrayals of tarring and feathering. But fine. Light, if we can't do tarring and feathering, TNF. the old pillory in the town square. All right. Everyone right. gets one friggin' tomato to throw at Dr. Fauci. I'm not even saying kick in the nuts. Just a tomato. Okay. What about a little nail in the ear? <laughs> yeah. Come on. Uh, uh. It's just your ear. Everyone get over it. <laughs> All right. At least we could uh, we could check his ears to see if he really is a Keebler elf or not. We could inspect them to see how pointy they are. Uh, who's next? Sorry. Oh, uh, I, that was on me. Sorry. Oh, uh, Oil King, I think. Proverbs 22 through uh, 6 through 7. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich rule over the poor. The, bar the borrower is servant to the lender. Bot tot hot smooth. <laughs> what? Well, there was, Although he's throwing money at us, so I probably shouldn't make fun of him. It's thanks just, for supporting the show, man. Scripture mixed with uh, robot talk is a hell of a combination. Yeah. Uncle Hunky Buck says, my trigger is non-binary. Its pronouns are bang, bang. Thank you. <laughs> That's funny. Nicholas H., Richard Parker, like a doodah cha-cha. I mean, I don't even know what's going on tonight. It's like people are singing songs or something. Knuckle Hunky Buck, the kidnapping victim's Google Play account search history had Ambler, uh, Ambler Alert app, Van DoorDash, and Uber Grabs. Is that a knuckle? Is that a Hunky Buck that's over my head? I don't know what the hell is going on. He's he's making a joke about apps she was using, or maybe it's real. Like for all I know, it could be serious with this lady. But <laughs> thank you. 
Uh, I'm sure that was an A plus. That was an A plus joke that uh, is too advanced for me. Spread my cheeks, Daddy. <laughs> Took the. Yeah. Come on. What? Oh. Uh, but no. This is just, I, this isn't even like sexual gross. This is a guy describing a dump that he took. I, I, I have you no decency? This is like sharing hunter porn in Congress. I, I, I can't. <laughs> oh, God. I'm, I'm not reading. Has it, okay. If, if you are pooping blood, you should get a colonoscopy. You should, you should consult a medical professional. Yeah. Um, if it's that bloody. Yeah. Knuckle Hunky Box says the title of the movie was not the name of the character or object that has the largest percentage of screen time. Zero out of five wikis, Matt Christensen. Yeah, I get that. Uh, <laughs> you, that's, there's not a rule that says you have to do that. But I, what I'm saying is, is Be- is the movie about Beetlejuice or is Beetlejuice just kind of a guy who's there? And I think he's just kind of a guy who's there with some. Quirks. That's a fair criticism. He, he the fact that he doesn't show up in any substantive way until over halfway through the movie. What what are we talking about here? Is this is a movie about something else? I'm not saying that compels a different title or something. I'm just saying you, you think it's it creates an expectation that it's going to be about a particular character, and then in the end, it's not, and that makes it hard to enjoy because you expect A, you get B, but B isn't like a pleasant or entertaining surprise. It's like where the hell's this guy that was advertised? And then yeah. he shows up, he doesn't do what he's supposed to do, and then he just quote unquote dies or goes back to the underworld. He, it, it's a, it's a pointless story about a pointless character and the pointless character isn't even there for half the pointless story, but I get it. You're just, you're making fun of me. I'll allow it. <laughs> Knuckle Hunky Buck. She was 17 at the time, but she was very close to 18. Uh, <laughs> quote me. You're sounding a bit like a Democrat, Matt. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess so. Uh, maybe I'm sounding, uh, kind of like Hunter Biden. I suppose. Let's see. I had to refresh. Are you able to take over? Who's next? Uh, Cheese Vault. Here we go. Uh, hey, Richard. Tigers aren't very kosher since I know you love all that stuff. Hmm. All right. I, <laughs> that one, I don't even. Are people fighting on in Telegram or something? I, I don't know. About... I don't know what the tiger bit is about. I, I don't know. I never ask if I can vape somewhere. I just do it when I feel like it. I'm a real vapist. <laughs> okay. See, that is the lowbrow hunky buck humor that that I understand. It's, if it's a vaping emergency, you know, it's a vaping. That's a throwback to a 2017 migrant sexual assault at a pool in Germany. Remember that? The sexual emergency? That's what they called it way back in the day? Yeah, I don't, I, didn't, I don't remember that term. I remember the event, but I don't remember that description. Sexual emergency. They could not control their urges. They can't. That was They're the like emergency. Animals. All right. Nagalangi Bug. Robin D. Banks and I once made love while Banksy and I were going at it. Matt Mittens was angrily crying with clenched fists, shouting, please just stop. That can't be the last one. I got to read. There's, tr- there's Tortuga. Thank you, Hunky oh. Buck. In fact, uh, thank you for all your support for the show this evening. It's very much. We love you. You're very special. Tortuga says, I listened to all the super chats and I learned one thing. I clearly don't do enough drugs. Well, yeah, I guess between listening to uh, QAnon Shaman and uh, our super chat, those are. uh, What's the uh, auto quote in The Simpsons? I don't need drugs to enjoy this just to enhance it. I've always loved that one. (laughs) I don't know. Uh, We're good on on, uh, Rumble and um, on. Uh, simple. I can't. I'm reading stupid stuff you can on do my a screen. Bud? Tippy stream. There it is. We're good on YouTube and Tippy stream. Uh, Rumble looks like we're good. Uh, over on Odyssey, Rowdy Dude says you guys were talking about Europa, the last battle. I found it here on Odyssey, and there's a link. Uh, I did receive some links to it in my email inbox, so thank you guys for that. As I mentioned on Wednesday, um, I have watched like the first 45 minutes of it. In fact, I, I had it on while I was doing the post stream stuff that I usually do last Sunday. And, um, well, I'm not going to reiterate all my thoughts that I had on Wednesday about it. Uh, I will say that, uh, my interest was, my interest peaked when they started talking about the Titanic. Mm. That's, that's what I was like. All right, go on. I want to hear more. And now that the now that Titanic is in play, I'm in, tell me more. And uh, I didn't have time to watch much, much beyond that. Um, man though, 12 hours, 
Like, I get it. You got a lot to say about a lot of people who did a lot of stuff. But, oh, it's uh, not a lot of people. <laughs> but 12 hours, can, like, can I get, can I get the highlights? Can I get, I don't know, a summary? Um, <laughs> maybe over time, maybe over time I'll complete it. But, you know, I'm, I'm a family man. I got stuff to do. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for sending it to me. Um, all right. Anything else before we get out of here? No, let's do it to it. Thanks for joining us, guys. All right. Looks like we uh, we're all set. Thank you guys for your uh, participation in the show this evening. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for chatting. Thanks for your support for the show as well. Appreciate the super chats. And um, if you're uh, listening later on demand, thank you kindly as well for tuning in. It is greatly appreciated. And if you'd like more to listen to, there is plenty more material on the audio platforms uh, linked in the description and over on the website. That's mattchristiansonmedia.com. Look for the podcast page. We have the call-in show replays. We have some of Blonde's interviews. We have lots of extra material you may not find on YouTube. So check that out. Speaking of, if you'd like to find anything show-related, you're looking for the latest episode of the show, you want to pick up a t-shirt, you want to read my crappy movie review, anything show-related, you want to get some of Blonde's soap, mattchristiansonmedia.com is the place to do it. We'll be back next Sunday, because if it's Sunday, sorry, Chuck Todd, it's not me at the press. It is the Matt and Blonde Show. Have a great night. Bye.